Patricia Franchini and her husband Giovanni Nunez are suing their neighbor, Scott Ellum, for the cost of a baby macaw bird. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Hello, Kevin. Case 2194, Frankini Nunez versus Ellen. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Nunez? Yes. Your husband? Yes, ma'am. You and Mr. Allen? Ellen. You're right. Ellen. Our neighbors. Yes, ma'am. And you have backyards that are joined, separated only by a fence. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma what kind of fence? It looks plastic. I'm not sure. It's Who a has vinyl a picture fence, of the yeah. fence? And you each have, as it would happen, dogs at the same breed. No, ma'am. What do you have? I have a Shetland Sheepdog and a Dutch Shepherd, ma'am. And what do you have? I have Shepherd mixes. How many dogs? Two, Your Honor. And you have two? Yes, ma'am. This is what the case is about. This is the fence. It's not a chain link fence. It's either a wooden or a plastic fence. And you can see that underneath this fence, there's a board here where I assume there's a hole because the dogs dig holes to get to each other. Is that a fair statement? Yes, Your Honor. Fair statement? Yes, ma'am. OK, good. Case is about an incident that occurred. You've been neighbors for a while, and you have had this dog digging also for a while. Also correct? Yes, yes ma'am. The defendants. OK. This incident happened on the 16th of December, 2022. Yes, Why don't you tell me what happened? I got up that morning to let my dogs out. Both. One dog. OK, so the day started out, me and my husband woke up. My husband had to go get a tire fix, so he took my smallest dog, my Shetland Sheepdog, with him. I remained home with my two children. Slowly. Yes. OK. Sorry. How um, old are your kids? They are six and seven, ma'am. OK. I remained home with my children because they were ill, and I had an appointment with them later on that day. My husband went to go fix the tire at 8 a.m. I got up in the morning to let my dog out. I let... Sorry. Got up in the morning to let your dog out. Yes. The shepherd mix? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I let her out, and then she came back in, and I was cleaning, and my two children were in my master suite with my macaw, Penelope. Okay, that's what the case about. This case about a macaw. Yes, ma'am. The ma cost of a macaw. Yes, Which is a bird. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma Go ahead. My kids were in the master suite. I opened the door. I'm out there cleaning. I let my dog out of my... And the dog came back. ...sliding door. She came back. Well, then she stayed by the door. Now, none of my windows have curtains, so I can... Just a second. So that, But she stayed by the door, but she was inside? She came back inside. I shut the door. I then... This was 20 minutes went by. She's by the door. She's crying. I told her we would play later. I assumed she had to go to the restroom again, and I let her out again. She stood on the step, but she didn't go further than that, and she was just kind of staring out. From the left side of the house is where the defendant's dog, Bella, charged in my home. And then when I tried to grab her... When you say his dog, Bella... Yes. ...came into the side and ran into the house, that doesn't... Somehow, if the dog, Bella, came out and your dog was on the step, it would seem to me it would stop on the step at first to sniff, play with your dog if your dog is sitting outside. I mean, I have dogs. It would go over to that dog first, not run into your house. You would think that, ma'am, but she's been in our house three times before this because I had to return her to the defendant on three separate occasions. And? And she didn't do that that day. When she came in the backyard on the three other instances, I remember the very first time someone from that household came to my door, and I knew the dog was in my backyard, but I didn't open my door. I left her back there. I figured they'd come. They did. And I said, hold on a second. I put my kids, I put my Sheltie in the room with my bird, and I shut the door. Are we talking about the same no, date, December? We're talking about other days that I no. brought... OK, let's not go on tributaries. Yes, ma'am. What's your dog's name? Lucy. Lucy. So the dog just went straight into your house. And what did Lucy do? Lucy charged after her and tried to attack her. OK. So the dog has been in your house before. Have there been incidents with the two dogs? No, ma'am. The defendant's dog is submissive to my dog. So the only time I brought the dog in my home was when I shut all the doors to all my bedrooms. Someone from the defendant's home came. I opened up the front door, brought her in, and she went straight out because there was nowhere else for her to go. OK. So it's your dog that is the... Lucy is the more aggressive dog. Lucy's never been aggressive with her. I believe that Lucy was aggressive with her that day because of the way she came in the house. When you say Lucy was aggressive, what did she do? She started growling at her, and she started... To... In the house? Yes. Now and... they're in the house. Put a period there. We have the two dogs in your house. Yes. And they are growling at each other. So that's not a happy picture, because they're big dogs. Yes. Now let's get to the bird. You purchased a macaw. 
Yes, ma'am. You have a photograph of what they look like? Yes. When did you purchase the macaw? I purchased her with payments over time. I completed mm -hmm. the purchase at the end of September, September 30th. This is the macaw? Yes, ma'am. That's my A friend. parrot? Yes, ma'am. In December, how old was she? She was going to be eight months. And how much did you pay for her? I paid $4,320.08 for Penelope. OK, can I see the bill? Absolutely, ma'am. Her birth certificate along She's with beautiful. all of the... Pretty bird. Thank you, ma'am. She bolted in my master suite where my kids were. Lucy? No, Bella. Bella. Bella did. And I went in there, like, I heard my kids screaming, Bella is killing Penelope. And later today. Is there something wrong with your mind? No. Did you just say to me, am I crazy? Did he say he owed back child support? Yes. yes. To her? Yes. yes. Patricia Franchini claims her neighbor, Scott Ellum, owes for the cost of a baby macaw bird killed by Scott's dog. Tell me what got you interested in the macaw. Earlier this year, full disclosure, ma'am, I had a, ended up in the hospital very sick for two weeks, and I was going through a lot, and I started volunteering at the bird store down by my home, and I really liked the Hans macaw because my grandma had one when she was younger. Slowly. Yes, ma'am. And so I spent a lot of time bonding with the birds there, and my husband and I thought it would be good and therapeutic for me, given what I had been going through. Okay, now the two dogs are in your house, sort of fighting with each other. They did not fight, ma'am, I did not well, allow them to. Well, growling, yes, growling at each other. And tell me what happened with Bella and the macaw. I tried to calm Lucy down, and my master door was open. Everything was happening so fast. I know I'm describing it slowly, but it was quick. She bolted in my master suite where my kids were. Lucy? No, Bella. Bella. Bella did. I heard my kids screaming, Bella is killing Penelope. And That's the bird. Yes. And I tried to get to Bella. I couldn't. My dog was standing in between us. And while I was with the two dogs, then my son thought, oh, I'm going to go get her. And that's when he got Bella kind of snapped at him and she scratched him. And so then I couldn't get her. I, I couldn't. He, she literally was like chewing her up and like dropping her and like biting her again, you know? And it wasn't until my Dutch Shepherd bit her on the nose that she finally let her go. And I swooped and I grabbed her. I booked it to my pantry in my kitchen with my kids. And Lucy stayed in front of the door. And I have a door on it. And I just stayed in there. And I called my husband. And I was screaming on the phone. He got home maybe, I don't know how long. It probably really only was like five or 10 minutes, but it felt like forever. She was like, and where was in my Bella arms. during this? Time. Bella was around the pantry with the bird in her mouth. And then I took the bird from Bella and then I put her to the cage. And then Lucy just stayed by the, by the parrot. And then I opened the door and yeah, talked to the kids. Um, they were all hysterical. And I was trying to understand what she was Where saying. Where was Bella? Bella was in the kitchen with a parrot. And how did Bella get back to the defendant? I walked her over. How did you do that? Kind of like how a, a mother pup grabs her by the, by the neck. I grabbed her by the neck and I w walked her over. Okay, your dog killed their bird in their house. And? Your Honor, the hole that allowed Bella to get into their backyard was primarily dug by their dog over the course of many, many months. And? I continued to repair my side of the fence. Their dog continued to dig the hole, destroyed wood that I had put there. The dog got through in that story. It's sad, but that's not the story that he gave to my wife when he came pounding on my door. Well, you can't tell me what he said to I your wife, sir. Phone. OK, that's fair, Your Honor. I can tell you what he said to me. I called him. You can tell me what he said to you. Instantly? Just you have to understand, he wasn't home when your dog got into the house. He came home at the end of the episode. Do you understand that? I understand that. OK. Understanding that, you can tell me your version of what he said to you. What they both said to me, I've had conversations with the both of them since this has happened. Okay. The story has changed two or three times. First, it was she was doing something in the backyard and Bella just came charging in and basically knocked her out of the way, got inside. The first story was, I assume the entire time that he was home, because when he was talking to me over the phone... I don't care what you happened. assumed. He wasn't home when it started. Your problem, sir, is, first of all, you were aware of the whole 
I don't care who dug it. You were aware of it. And it's not the first time that the dog has gone onto their property. Has their dog got onto your property? No, because I fixed my side of it. Just, I take care so of it. So the my answer house. is the answer is no. Correct. Who do you live in your house with? My wife and my children. How old are your children? I have a one year old. I have a seven year old. Let us say it's their fault that the hole existed that allowed your dog to get out. But you were aware of it because it had happened before that they had to bring your dog back. Is that a fair statement? That's fair, yes. Okay. Let us assume that it was your dog that was responsible for the hole. And their dog, despite the fact that yours was a better digger, you know, having dogs and having a fence, they both dig at the same place. They may not have fixed their side, but they both dig at the same place trying to get to each other. Whose fault do you think it would be if their dog created the major part of the hole, got into your yard, and bit your one-year-old? Whose fault would that be? I think it would be equally our faults. Really? Absolutely, yeah. For really? Di for digging, for not taking care of your property? Absolutely. Really? I actually find that answer sort of bizarre. I would take responsibility if my child got hurt due to something that I didn't take care of. Absolutely, I would. Well, you may feel guilty about it, but you would certainly want them to pay all of your child's medical bills. No, I would not. Well, then you're a better person than the law is, sir, because your dog was outside of your control clearly, because it got into their house. It was something that you were aware was a possibility, no matter who dug the hole, so you were aware because it had happened before, and your dog caused damage. And the damage your dog caused, and I'm putting the emotional distress, these two young children and the plaintiff seeing your dog kill this bird that they had been paying off so much per month for a very long time. Putting aside that, they paid $4,300 for this property that your dog destroyed. And that's your fault. You're responsible for that. So if because of this problem and your dog has a problem and their dog has not come onto your property but your dog comes onto their property, then you have to say, you know what? I'm not letting my dog go out unsupervised because it has created trouble in the past. May have been their fault because they didn't fill in the hole as quickly or as carefully as you did. But you knew that that happened and you're responsible for the damage. It would be no different than if the dog ran inside and as she was trying to get the dog, the dog bit her and she had to have surgery and she had to have a plastic surgeon deal with reconstruction. Who do you think would be responsible for that? That would be you. And just because it's a poor little bird that happened to be the victim of this doesn't make you any less responsible. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $4,300. We're finished. Court is adjourned. I feel like it was justice for Penelope. When a homeowner doesn't take care of their property and someone lets another dog in their house, they shouldn't be blaming other people for that. It was extremely difficult to hear my kids screaming like that and do nothing to calm them down. The judge's ruling is the judge's ruling. I hope that he never gets another pet again. I don't think there's going to ever be a relationship, which is totally fine by me. One of the most interesting things about that case is I don't think that the defendant's dog, Bella, was a quote-unquote aggressive dog. But I didn't get a hint that the other dog was even aggressive. Even by the fact that the husband was able to walk her back by the scruff of the neck, if that was an aggressive dog, they would just yeah. turn right around and give you a nice little snap. So that says to me that although the dog didn't obviously do it on purpose, what are you going to do? But you're responsible as a defendant. You let your dog out. It's a act that's happened more than once. You were on notice. Dog is out of your control. You're responsible. That's the bottom line. Case 2202, Young versus Buchanan. All parties, please come forward. Essie Young is suing her granddaughter's father, Keith Buchanan, for an unpaid loan she gave him for a car. Miss Young, the defendant is married to your daughter? No. He is the father of your grandchild? Yes. Do he and your daughter live together? No. Where does your daughter live? In Maple Shade. Were they ever married? No. They have one child? Yes. Who's 12? Yes. Did you live together with Miss Young's daughter? Well, at one point, she lived with me in Maple Shade. How long ago? This was 2010, 2011. You mean when your daughter was a baby? Yes. How long have you had custody of your granddaughter? 11 years. My daughter never stayed with him. I don't know that. He says she did. Yeah, but she did. 
So she got that money that he owed her for child support, for taking care of his daughter, and he wrote that off of the loan. Is that what you're telling me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god Essie Young claims her granddaughter's father Keith Buchanan refuses to pay back a loan she gave him for a car this is a very simple case, because I don't have to get into the history of why you have custody of your granddaughter. Yes. Mr. Buchanan, according to you, asked you for a loan to buy a car. Yes. When was that? Before he got it. He was calling every day. Did you maintain a relationship with him? Yes and no. Would he visit his daughter? No. Ever? Once in a blue moon. OK. I usually have to take my granddaughter to see him. OK. It was sort of odd to me if he was never married to your daughter, so they didn't have a formalized relationship, they don't live together now, why would you loan him? I know that you did. Mm -hmm. Why would you loan him money? My granddaughter. Except you're a very nice person. My granddaughter asked me to. She said, Grandma, would you please help my dad? I told her I really don't want to. And she said, could you please do it for me? Oh, and different then, story. Yes, and then I said, OK. OK. So you discussed with your daughter during one of these visits that you needed money to buy a car? No, never did. You never did? No. Who is this person? That's my wife. Does she work? Yes. Do you work? Yes. Well, why would you ask your daughter's grandmother, who takes care of her, who's always taken care of her, you don't, neither does her mother, why would you not ask your wife's family? You both work? Take out a loan. Why would you go to her and ask her for money? But it was a situation that happened and I lost my previous car. I contacted Essie. I talked to Essie. No, I'm asking you why you would ask her. What would prompt you to call her? Doesn't she have parents? Yes, she do. I did that and at the time they couldn't help. So you went to her parents I, first? I went to, I went to her family first. They said, they, sorry, they can't help at the time. So Mrs. Young was the last, my last resource was I didn't want to use, but at the time I had to use it because I had no other choice. I had to hurry up and get a vehicle. Well, why don't you take out a loan? Actually, I couldn't. What do you mean you couldn't? Because my credit's not all, all that great. I try to take out loans. I try to go. Does your wife have a car? Yes, yeah, she has a car. Oh, okay, well, why don't you use her car? She worked. I worked. I work an hour and a half away from home, and she worked too. And we worked around the same time. How much money did you borrow from her? Two thousand. How much did you give back? Nine hundred and twelve. Nine hundred and twelve. Show me. On page four, May 5th, 2022, she got $912. From what? From my taxes. And we agreed on once I filed my taxes, she would get, I would give her $2,000 for my taxes. She got $912 from them, that same taxes, because I owed backup child support. So she got on top of my regular payment for child support plus $912. What? Is there something wrong with your mind? No. Did you just say to me, am I crazy? Did he say he owed back child support? Yes. And so she got that money that he owed her for child support, for taking care of his daughter, and he wrote that off of the loan. Is that what you're telling me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. Well, I not ever. I should take that back. It's the dumbest thing I've heard today. If you owed her back child support, how much did you owe her? I only owed her $900. In back child support? Yes. OK. That I fully forgot. Just a second, just a second. You owed her that money. In addition to owing her that money, you owed her $2,000. Do you understand that? So you owed her $900 plus $2,000. Are you not following me? Am I getting something wrong here? I'm with you. Are you following that? That's either a yes or a no. No, I'm not. OK, well, I'm going to repeat it again. What you said was they took money out of your taxes for back child support, $900.
So that means you paid her $900 of the $2,000. That's what your argument is. Yes. Am I getting that? Yes. You already owed her the $900. I, was... did, I had no awareness that I owed her $900. When I found out that $900 got taken out the to taxes, I had no tax coming back. I asked, asked, I was like, look, you got $900. You're going to have to give me time. And that's when it went south. Oh, you got $900 that I owed you anyway. Now, now I need more time. Oh, my God. How is your granddaughter in school? She do okay? Yes, she's she doing well. She does okay? Yes. Okay. Either his math skills or his moral skills are somehow lacking. It's the moral. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $2,000. We're finished. Thank you very much. This court is adjourned. I think the judge seen right through him. He was going to be miserable, so I just let him be miserable. No one thinks like that. As long as she go by her life or go by my life, leave my family alone. I just think he was hustling me. Only contact me when he got something to do, something to do with my daughter, that's it. I don't want anything to do with him either. So initially, I may have been a little lost. It took me some time to get there. But I thought that what the defendant was saying was that he was expecting $2,000 on his tax returns. So he told plaintiff, when I get it, I'll repay you the $2,000. And then in his mind, when the $900 left the account, he didn't know that that was not going to be there for the back child support. So he only had, you know, the $900 and change left to give her. And I was like, OK. That makes sense. He thought that it would be the full 2000 Come to find out, he thinks that the back child support is what fulfills his, his obligation, obligation on... which wasn't even the full amount, not even half. And all to someone that has been raising your child for 12 years. He's probably worse at math. Suing his former friend, Jacob Knapp, for dental and medical bills. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Case 2110, Costello versus Knapp. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Costello, you and Mr. Knapp were out drinking in the park. Yes. Date and time. The date and time was around 3 a.m., and it was on 9-11 of 2021. And you've known Mr. Knapp for how long? Roughly nine years. We started off playing high school baseball. And when had you first met up on September 11th? I can't remember the exact time. I would say around maybe 7 p.m. Where? At a bar over in Old Town, Pasadena. We weren't meeting up. Just a second. Yeah. So you were in a bar in Pasadena, 7 p.m., just the two of you or were there more people? No. How many were there in the whole group? I had around five or six people in my group, and we went All to All friends? Bar. Yeah. And you? He wasn't a part of that group. Uh, but you were at the bar? No, ma'am. I was at work when he contacted me. Okay, so... Um, so you were at the bar starting at 7 with your friends. He wasn't there. Yeah. Okay, what time did he join you? It was in... I couldn't tell you the exact time. Approximately. About an hour later. At the bar? Yeah. But it wasn't a text or anything like that. He just happened to go to the same bar. No, ma'am. Uh, what ended up happening from the start... I was at work. He contacted me via text. I don't Do you have, have any... that text? No, ma'am. I tried to erase the whole memory from my mind, so I deleted all the pictures and all the text messages. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. That. Yes. That's unfortunate. I've never done that, by the way. You know, deleted, wanted to erase something from my mind, so I didn't just say I'm not going to think about it anymore. I've never done that. Did you ever do that, Sarah? I have not. You have not? And she's pretty efficient with text messages. Did you ever do that? Never with... have I done that. No. Well, you must be unusual, sir. OK, so you met at the bar. What time did you get there? Uh, well, my shift ended at around 9 o'clock. What time did you get to the bar? 10 o'clock. And when you got to the bar, you met Mr. Costello. Yes, ma'am. He had a few friends with him. How long did you stay at the bar? Uh, we were there until 12. Okay, so Mr. Costello, you had been drinking from 7 until about 12. Correct. The answer is yes. Yes, of course. And what's your drink of choice, sir? Uh, beer. What else? Uh, the, the first bar that we were at doesn't, doesn't serve hard alcohol. So it was just beer there. Okay, so yeah. from 7 to when were you at the first bar? Yeah. From 7 to when? 7 to when? Till to 12. 12. Yeah. So it's but 7 I was to 12. At the same, same time as well. Okay, so from 7 to 12, you were drinking beer? Yeah. And then where did you go at 12 o'clock? After 12 o'clock, we ended up going to another bar in Arcadia. Okay, and you stayed there from when to when? Uh, from 12 to closing, which is 2 a.m. And you were part of that group? Yes, that's when I initially met the group. 
At the second bar? Or at the, the first? second bar, yes. Not at the first bar? No, ma'am. Okay. So you got to the second bar. You were there about... You said you were there at 10 o'clock. Yes. So they weren't there when you arrived. They were there when I arrived, yes. Well, he said that... I thought he said he got to the second bar at 12 o'clock. I arrived at the bar at around 10 o'clock, ma'am. And you got there at 12 o'clock? Yeah. Yeah. So by the time you all got together and left the bar, you had all been drinking, you for a very long time, and you for a shorter time. Yes, ma'am. So from 10 to 2, so four hours. And what's your drink of choice? 10 to 12, Your Honor. I apologize. 10 to 12. Where did you go for, at 12 o'clock? Uh, 12 o'clock is when uh, we had all decided to go to a park, um, kind of a low-key area. No, he said that he went to a bar between 7 and 12. Mm -hmm. Am I correct, Whitney? Did he say? 7 and 12. He mm -hmm. said you were at the bar, first bar, between 7 and 12, drinking beer. That's what you said. Correct. You said the first bar only served beer. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh uh is not an answer. Yes, yes, yes is an answer. Is. You say at 12 o'clock you went to a second bar where you had alcohol between 12 and 2. Yes. Correct. Yes? Correct. You got to a bar at 10 o'clock. Yes. Which one? The beer bar or the alcohol bar? I finished my shift, like I said, at 9, and... I showed up at the bar at 10 to meet up with them to try to rekindle an old friendship. Okay. Yeah. I actually don't care about that. All right, so partially you got your story straight, partially not. Anyway, you were two drunks. Now it's after 2 o'clock, and you decide to go to a park. How many people went to a park, and what park? It was the same amount of people that I was with from the start. And you were along at the park? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I was. Okay. Did you take any beers to the park or you went without them? You took yes. beers to the park. The answer uh, is yes. Yeah. The main reasoning of going to the park was after the bar had closed, Jacob mentioned to the, the group that he had beers with him. So that incited us to go to the park and have some to beers. To continue drinking. Him. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. It, prior, prior to me showing up, I did stop by 7-Eleven. Okay. So you had beers with you and you were at the bar? Yes. Nice. Very good. Now you get to the park, you're drinking beers. Now you're going to describe what you say is the assault that you suffered at the hands of Mr. Knapp. Now, I want you to know my feeling before you tell me the story. Okay. I usually don't get myself overly exercised about what drunks do in a mm -hmm. park. Do you understand? Mm hmm I know that you may be all exercised about it, although I'm not exactly sure you're all exercised about it. So if you really are, I'm going to listen to you. If you're not, yeah. we just eliminate this case. Do you understand? Yes, mm -hmm. ma'am. <laughs> If he just simply tossed me a beer, I don't understand how a beer can could chip my tooth the way that it Just did. a second. I can eat a biscotti and it can chip my tooth. Biscotti, that's a cookie. And that, I mean, I could chip my tooth on my grandmother's steak. It was so hard. Giovanni Castello claims his former friend, Jacob Knapp, owes for dental bills after being hit in the mouth with a beer can. Okay, go. You're in the park, drunk. Starting He's the park, in the yeah. park, drunk. Yes. And? To state I was not drunk because I was driving my witness here. I want to tell you something. If you were drinking right. from 7 to 2, you were drunk. I hadn't been drinking the whole time that I was Let's there. Let's go. Let's okay. go. So going into it, I was sitting at a park bench with Maureen here. And then I had another two friends that were on the other side, and we're hanging out. They had the, the two across from me got up. They went further into the park, and I was sitting with just her alone. And I was just about to show her a video off my phone. Next thing I know, I get hit in the face by a beer. After that occurs, I reach to my mouth to see something's wrong there, and I feel that, like, a, a part of my tooth is missing. Okay, and that's what we're talking about. Yeah. That's the assault mm -hmm. that you're talking about. Yeah. And you allege that Mr. Knapp was the one who threw the beer bottle. Yes. Okay. It was a full beer can. A can? Yeah, not a bottle. Did I have you to report I'm this sorry. incident to the police? I did not take it to the police no, because... Just a second, I'm just asking you. Oh, sorry. The answer is no. No. I disagree. With disagree his, that with, he went to the police? With his story. Okay, I'll get there. Okay, so now you get hit in the face with a beer can, step by step. You look down, you look at your tooth. Realize it's chipped. I say aloud, I, my tooth is chipped. She doesn't... Don't tell me not about she. Just oh, you. Just me? I just, I noticed it was chipped. And then after I announced that it was chipped, several of my friends, I guess, went towards him. And well, I don't you know didn't tell me anything about him. 
You didn't tell me. You just said he got hit in the face with a beer can. Yeah. That's all you said to and me. And he was the only other person I was standing right there besides her sitting just next to me. So you didn't see him throw the beer can at you? There was no one else there. I'm just... Yeah. Oh, sorry. I didn't, I didn't see him throw it at me, but I never... There was never a case of... No, you didn't. Of anything That's else. all. Yeah. You didn't see him throw it at you? No. Okay, go. Uh, from the park, Your Honor? Take it from All the right. park. So Now I got two drunks in the park, maybe three. There was actually more than just three of us surrounding the table. Um, just a second. Me and him... Go slowly. Okay, sorry. Slower. Let me take I it don't know the table. I have no idea what you're talking about. So, as he was saying, we were sitting on a park bench. I had brought the beer. The beer was next to me. He had asked me to toss him a beer. And that's plainly okay. what I did was I underhanded him lightly a beer to him. And in his defense, he's saying he wasn't drunk, but he, it definitely was apparent that he was. When you lightly toss a beer... anybody who's been drinking from 7 to 2 in the morning is drunk. Yes, ma'am. So I lightly tossed him a beer, and unfortunately it was dark enough to where he had missed, and the beer had hit him in the face. In which after, immediately, I started to apologize to him, stating that I didn't mean to, but it was apparent he was looking at me and did not catch the beer. So, personally, I think everything he said to you okay. right now was... That's, that's your story. You tossed him a beer yeah. because he asked you, he said, toss me a beer. Yes, Your Honor. And it was dark. Yes. And you were drunk. And he was drunk. I wasn't drunk, Your Honor. I had four beers no. within the time of no. 10 o'clock till not, when this incident yeah. happened. You know, I'm not real comfortable with that, sir. Okay. Because according to you, you had been drinking for four hours. And not only were you drinking for four hours, but you brought extra alcohol to have in the park. By the way... Which was a by the way, container. Where do you live? In what city? In Pasadena, Your Honor. In California. Are you allowed to drink alcohol in parks in California? I'm not certain. Well, let's find out. Open beer cans in city parks in California. That's a no. So after... I, we're not oh, talking yet. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Drinking alcoholic beverages is a prohibited activity in parks and park areas, according to the Pasadena City Park rules. Thank you. This park that you went to, what's the name of it? I'm not sure. It was up the street from the last bar we were at. Okay. Now, did you, Mr. Costello, and the defendant, immediately after this event, did you communicate with him via text or email? I texted okay. him, I think it was roughly a couple of days later. Okay. I'd like to see the mm -hmm. text. I have that. That's all no, I want to see. Don't... I could... Don't say anything else. Okay. Please. Just show me the texts that you sent him a couple of days later. There it is. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. I'd like to see these texts from your phone, and I'd like to see all your text messages starting September 14th. It's right here. Of 2021. Mm hmm No, sir, you have to understand. What you said to me here, mm -hmm. what you gave me, is two texts a year apart. Mm -hmm. I want to see the texts to him... There was nothing. ...after September 14th. You mean he didn't respond at all the to this? I don't believe that. My next I thing don't... that I did was I sent a letter through the mail, and I have that here, and I have proof of it where I had it so where he had to sign for it, and I have the receipt for it as well. What date? That one, I can pull it up right here. I'm sorry, what letter? I never received a letter. Just a second. So what you're telling me is that I'm supposed to believe that after you sent this email on September 14th, which is three days after the event, mm -hmm. he never responded to you and you never sent a follow-up email that or was text. The, that was the letter. And then the letter I gave him... I... Shh, just a second. Okay. Oh, here. Take this back. It's nonsense. I don't want to see something prepared for litigation, sir. You said you had a document that you sent to him that he had to sign for. If you sent him a letter, return receipt requested, then you have a return receipt requested with a signature on it. That's a document that you prepared two days ago. I have the receipt in here. Let's get it. Okay. I never signed such document. Just, just uh, don't shout out again. Yes, ma'am. It's annoying, and I'm annoyed enough with this case. I'm sorry for being so unorganized. I... Me too. Yeah. I'm sorry you're so unorganized too. Or disorganized. Oh, here it is. Great. Certified mail. They're stuck to the back one. 
This was sent April of 2022. Mm -hmm. I want to see what the response was. There had to be a response I never got since a response September 14th, 2021. There had to be a response. I never got a response from him. Kevin, show this to Mr. Knapp and tell me if he recalls this text message. Uh, Your Honor, no, I do not remember getting this text. <laughs> Why would you respond a year later? I know from the past, dealing with Mr. Knapp here, he tends to always, being friends whenever, get into an altercation or argument, he unfollows me, blocks me on everything. Okay. So po there is a possibility by that text message I, I, not going I, through. I don't deal in possibilities, sir. I sent the text message, and I have proof of there. It was delivered, and I never got a response from him. I'm just asking, yeah. sir. This incident happened September 11th. You mm -hmm. have to understand, I think, that if that's what happened, happened. Mm -hmm. I tend to believe that the defendant did not just willy-nilly take a can and fling it at your face. I want you to know that I don't believe that. You were stupid enough to throw the beer can in his direction. You're too drunks, that's what happens. So, don't get so drunk and go to a park. How old are you? 27. 27 is old, and you? 28, Your Honor. 28. You know, old enough not to be so stupid. Giovanni Castillo has accused his former friend, Jacob Knapp, of hitting him with a beer can. Jacob says Giovanni asked him to throw it. Okay, it is more likely, more likely than not, that you were sitting with this lady who, according to you, you were supposed to drive home. Mm -hmm. That's what you said For five minutes ago. So you were supposed to drive home, which means she was trashed, because that's what you said. You no, said, I wasn't... This was the arrangements from the very yeah. beginning of the night. Okay. Do you understand? So mm -hmm. we had a whole bunch of trashed people, and I am more likely to believe the defendant when he says, you said to him, toss me a beer, and it accidentally hit you in the face. My, my questioning is, is that the... I don't answer questions. Okay, well, where the beer was placed on the table, I don't understand why I would have to ask him to toss me a beer when I can simply reach over and grab one myself. I don't know either. But no it is, sounds more likely to me than not that it was his beer, he brought it there, and you said to him, toss me a beer. And you failed to catch it. That's now, that doesn't mean that the defendant isn't at least partially responsible for the stupidity of that night. But you have some responsibility, too, because I really don't believe that he left the bar, he was angry and frustrated over something that you had no idea mm -hmm. what he was angry and frustrated over, because you were all sitting together, and he just, out of the blue, took a beer and threw it at your face. I don't believe that. What Do I, you understand? What, if I could show you a picture here, you could see, you could see that um, if he just simply tossed me a beer, I don't understand how a beer can could chip my tooth the way that it Just did. a second. Mm -hmm. It can. It okay. can. Okay. I can eat a biscotti and it can chip my tooth. Biscotti, that's a cookie, a very hard cookie. And have. Mm -hmm. And have. I mean, I could chip my tooth on my grandmother's steak, it was so hard. But certainly <laughs> from but certainly from a beer can. So I don't believe that you're blameless. What was your dental bill, sir? Are the statements here? While he's looking for that, you understand that if you were sitting there and instead of a bunch of beer cans and the plaintiff said to you, you know, that gun that's in your pocket, toss it over to me, I want to take a look at it. And you did. You took the gun out of your pocket and you tossed it over to him and as you were tossing it over, it accidentally fired. Would it be his fault if he got shot? No. No. Whose fault would it be? Uh, mine. Right because you weren't supposed to do that, right. because it was potentially dangerous. Of course. Well, same thing with a knife or an explosive device. Right. Or something very hot, like toss me a cup of coffee in a container and it splatters. So you don't do what anybody asks you to do if it's not a smart thing to do. Right. Unless you're drunk. <laughs> unless you're drunk. Your Honor, then, if I may. Um, yeah. Coming from a baseball background, as such as me and Gio did... I, I don't care about your expect, baseball background. You know, There's no question, sir, that you acknowledge you threw it at him. And I'm telling you... Right. ...that if your excuse is 
that he asked me to do it, so I followed the fool's directions. I'm telling you, he's going to pay part of his dental bill because I think it was partially his responsibility. But if you acknowledge that you were stupid enough to throw the beer can in his direction, you have to be partially liable. You're two drunks, that's what happens. So don't get so drunk and go to a park. How old are you? 27. 27 is old, and you? 28, Your Honor. 28. You know, old enough not to be so stupid. You know, you can figure 17, 18-year-olds are so stupid. At age 28, you should be doing something constructive. I assume you work? Yes. What kind of work do you do? I'm a chef. And you? I'm a lumberman, Your Honor. Okay, so you're both gainfully employed, letting off a little steam. That's fine. But if there's a problem that develops because anybody is not operating on all cylinders because of alcohol, you have to take responsibility. What was the dental bill? My dental bill came out to $2,342. Can I see that, please, Kevin? I have this here. I'll give you both. Was any of this dental bill covered by insurance? On the dental, no. Okay. Anything else? My, uh, my wholeheartedly truth is I didn't ask him for a beer. I had no problems. I was avoiding him the whole night for the most part because from the past, Jacob has had a way worse drinking problem than I've ever, like, gotten to. I went mm -hmm. out that night solely to have a couple of drinks, hang out with friends. The night went longer than expected. Very nice. Not Judgment sure. for the plaintiff for the amount of $1,171, which is half of your dental bill. You pay half. Don't get drunk. You're too old to get drunk. I don't believe that he maliciously threw this at you. I think that you asked for a beer, tossed it at you, and you missed. That was his stupidity oh. and yours. We're done here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Honor. This Thank court you. is adjourned. All I did was I, I underhand uh, lightly tossed it over to him, and that's really what happened. I did nothing wrong to deserve to get a, a beer thrown in my face like a baseball. Unfortunately, he chipped his tooth, and so it was unfortunate. I said, hey, Jacob, look, like, you chipped my tooth. Like, look what you just did. No more drinking in the parks, guys. Not to do it again. I think this situation is the exact reason cities like Pasadena have rules about drinking alcohol in parks. Because, like you always say, it's not an on purpose, it's an accident. But a lot of times there are certain things that can increase the probability of an accident That's happening. True. And I think drinking at 2 a.m. in a park probably is one of those things. <laughs> that's true. So that that's a so many times rules and regulations don't seem to have any substance of reason behind it. But this certainly is an example of why when the bar closes at two o'clock, you're supposed to go wing his brother, Randall Rubin for unpaid expenses from their mother's funeral. Court come to order, all rise. Have a seat, everyone. Good morning, Judge. Case number 2011, Ruben versus Ruben. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Ruben, this is your brother. Yes, it is, Your Honor. And this case involves sharing expenses for your mother's funeral. Correct. And it is your claim that your brother, who I believe was living with your mother at the time she died, Right. Agreed to pay half of the funeral expenses when he received proceeds from a small life insurance policy that your mother had left. Yes, Judge. Our mother only left us a $5,000 life insurance policy. That's what the case is about. Right. Your brother's position is it's not his responsibility. He made no such promise. Of course, you do understand that without that promise to pay for your mother's funeral expenses, children aren't normally responsible for the expenses of their parent. Do you understand that? Yes, Judge. Mr. Rubin, when did your mother pass away? She passed away August 20th of 2021. How old was she? She was 86. And how long had you been living with your mother? Uh, your Honor, I took care of my mother since 1991. Well, if you were taking care of her for almost 30 years, sir, what kind of physical malady did she have when she was in her 50s? She suffered from chronic uh, kidney failure. When did that medical condition develop? Pretty close to 91. What is pretty close to 91? Beginning in the 90s, 91, 92, etc. So when you moved in with her, was your mother sick or was she not sick? She was sick. Did you live with your mother because it was not only good for your mother, but because it was good for you? That's Correct. what I'm trying to get yes. to. Yes. The answer is yes. Yes, And you moved into your mother's house. Correct. That she owned or rented? She was uh, purchasing it through a mortgage. She owned her home? Yes, ma'am. Was she working in the 90s? She was. Therefore, she wasn't incapacitated to the extent that she needed full-time care. At the beginning, no, ma'am. 
when you moved in with her, she was employed on a full-time basis Correct. sufficient enough to get a mortgage from a bank based upon her income. Correct. And what were you doing in 1991? I worked. For whom? Associates. For how long? Off and on from 91 till about two years ago. What does off and on mean? I had several jobs in between. I sold cars for various car dealerships, and I also owned several businesses. When you lived with your mother, who paid the mortgage? My mother did. Did you pay your mother for any expenses? Rent, gas, electric, phone, anything? Uh, or did you live there and you had an agreement? You lived there, she wanted your company, whatever it was, she lived alone? At the time, yes. In 1991, she was just living alone? Correct. And I assume, therefore, happy to have your company. Correct. I assume. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you made no payments to your mother? With the occasional help with some utilities or food, yes. Okay. So you were able, I assume, to save a substantial amount of money? Correct. Just for my own information, so that I can sort of put this thing together? Sure. You have stocks, bonds, savings? No, ma'am. What do you have? You were able to save a lot of money. How did you invest it? I invested in several businesses, which one is my liquidation company. What happened with your mother's house? When she passed, I was still residing at the house. I paid the mortgage by myself for the months of September 2021 as well as October 2021. And I remained there until, I want to say, February 2022. My sister is the executor of the estate, and she uh, sold it just recently for 465000 Okay. So what I'm gathering from you, you paid the mortgage, you say, in September and October, then you stopped paying the mortgage November, December, January, and February. That is correct, ma'am. But you lived in the house. I did. Rent-free, because you paid nothing. Correct. Where are you living now? I live in Nogales, Mexico. And you live in a house? You live in a... In an apartment, ma'am. You pay rent? I do. Anybody live with you? No, ma'am. What's your rent? $250. Okay. And what was the mortgage payment in your mother's house? I paid $1,750 even. Are you the sister? Yes, Your Honor. Could you stand up for a second? I'm just getting some information. Tell me your name. Shannon Hayes. Ms. Hayes, house was sold recently for four sixty-five, dollars And what was left on the mortgage? $258,000 plus a $35,000 uh, third mortgage. Your Honor, since, Sarah, uh, since her brother was not paying, since he wasn't paying, the house actually went into foreclosure. Just and so we had to get... Just say, I didn't ask you anything. Okay, I'm just... Sarah Rose, four sixty-five, less two fifty-eight. dollars $207,000, Your Honor. Less 35. 172. Okay, and there are three siblings? And also, Your Honor, there was a $10,000 lien on the property that had to be paid. So we're down to 162. Mm -hmm. Correct. So it's 162 clear, so a little over $50,000 a person. She owed the IRS, Your Honor, for back payments in excess of $54,000. She hadn't paid taxes in years. Did you pay the IRS? I just did. And how much did you pay the IRS? 54000 $188. Sarah, from 162, take out 54000 $108,000. Anything else? Yes, Your Honor. She had uh, Arizona state taxes, $3,000 I paid as well. 105. Is that 105 net? So we also have the medical bills that I had to take care of. She had no insurance and she had to have Medicare. She did, Your Honor. That's her co payment. Okay. And what was her co payment? $3,000 in medical. Let's do a simple $100,000. Mm -hmm. How much were the funeral expenses? $2,434.73. Was the total funeral expense? Yes. Well, that's what you're claiming he owes you. That's his share of the... I want to know what the entire funeral costs are. You'll show me the invoice. Sure. I, I do have all the invoices for you. The first one, Your Honor, is just for the cremation. 1058. Correct. Okay. 1058. The next one should be from the cemetery. This is the total funeral home charges, and this is cremated remains internment of $2,200. Correct. The next invoice you should have, Your Honor, is from uh, services provided by a rabbi. 
Okay, that was six hundred dollars. Your Honor, it was actually seven hundred. I paid the rabbi one hundred as an honorarium. No, that's six hundred dollars. Whatever you want to pay him as an honorarium, that's fine. So the total expenses. Three thousand eight hundred and fifty-eight dollars. Um, you should have another invoice for a uh, proposal for a headstone as well. Seventeen seventeen. Yes, 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 Your Honor. Thirty-eight fifty-eight plus one thousand seven hundred seventeen dollars. Five thousand five hundred and seventy-five dollars. That's it. Okay. I assume your mother died without a will. Correct, Your Honor. Okay. And you are the only surviving siblings. Yes, Your Honor. The estate will be divided into three parts. Correct. So each one of you will get about $33,000 from the estate after all of the expenses have been paid. There's also the real estate commission fees that we didn't mention to subtract from the net income. And what were the real estate commission fees? $30,000. Oh, that, yeah, that's a substantial amount. Yes, Your Honor. So 108 less 30, $78,000. So now you're down to $25,000 each. That's correct, Your Honor. What I'm trying to figure out is, even giving you all those expenses that you paid, your mother's estate, absent this $5,000 life insurance policy that there was, correct? And you got a share of that life insurance policy. How much... Don't... Yes, the answer yes, is ma'am. yes. How much did you receive? 2500 even. Okay, 2500 Yes, ma'am. And did you get a share of that life insurance policy? No, Your Honor. Did you? Yes, Your Honor. I also received $2,500. Great. And the estate had net, 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 after everything, at least $75,000 divided by three, which is $25,000 apiece, after you pay all expenses, Mm -hmm. which in this case would have been funeral expenses. Do you understand where I'm coming from, sir? I do. I have children and grandchildren. Ten years is a long time. It's a grandchild. She didn't see me at least once a month. She better keep her fingers crossed that I don't change my will. <laughs> John Rubin is suing his brother, Randall Rubin, for unpaid funeral expenses. Randall is countersuing, claiming Sean defamed him. So now, If what you're asking me, Mr. Rubin, is to find that you had an agreement with your brother to pay one-third of the funeral expenses because the two of you each paid one-third of the funeral expenses, is that what you did? Well, Your Honor... That's that's either a yes or a no. It is a no. I'm the only one that had the money to process our mother... He would not even sign to get her process to continue the cremation. I have evidence here I'd like to submit to you where he agreed to pay me half of it out of his life insurance. Okay, that's all. I have texts from him. Just a second. I'm going to take a look at it. You have to understand, Mr. Rubin, that at this point, if I find that he agreed to pay for half, then you understand that you agreed to pay for half of her funeral. Ordinarily, the funeral expenses, you may front the money for those funeral expenses, but if the deceased had sufficient money in their estate to cover their last expenses, and those would be medical expenses, which you paid out of the estate, correct? Yes, Your Honor. Taxes, which you paid out of the estate. Yes, Your Honor. You paid out of the estate after you sold the house broker's fees. Mm -hmm. State tax fees, along with those kinds of fees, would be... Funeral expenses. Now, if the two of you agreed, or the two brothers agreed, which is what you're saying, that yes. he agreed to pay half, not a third, but he agreed to pay half of the funeral expenses for which you are not being reimbursed by the estate. Do you understand? Correct. I have not received anything from the estate, Your Honor. Okay. Well... This would be you. I'll let you know tomorrow. I think it's $2,200 for Menorah Gardens, and cremation was ten fifty three. so it's $1,626 each. That would be you, right? Yes. Okay. 1626 Because you asked him how much you owed, right? I did. So I assume since you asked him how much you owed, you had some sort of an arrangement with him to pay a third, because it does say a third, of the funeral expenses. That is correct. Okay, great. I do want to interject, Your Honor, and let you know that when I did receive my monies, the $2,500 from her life insurance 
We had communicated with one another that I had some emergency dental work that needed to be done. It was life threatening. And therefore, he said, I don't have the email because I had to block him. I have a restraining order against him. So I lost all my emails between us. I listen. However, I ha I, nobody ever has their emails here I have or a video. A very substantial amount of those monies went for my dental. I don't care. How old are you? 59, ma'am. You have lived rent free for 30 years. And according to you, you had businesses. You worked most of that time, either selling cars or on and off for a company for 30 years. You made an agreement with your brother to pay one third of your mother's funeral expenses. And as far as I'm concerned, if you had dental problems, pay for it from the resources of one of your businesses because you had no expenses. You have very little sympathy for you. You lived in the house for months without paying the mortgage. That's outrageous. That's taking money away from them. Do you understand that? Yes, I say you lived in the house for three months rent-free, at mm. least three months rent-free. So if you paid mortgage payments for two months, I would say to you, sounds pretty <laughs> reasonable to me. You know, there's a story that's created. Correct. And what's created here is there's unequivocal information in these text messages that mm -hmm. you and your brother and sister, because you, sir, are claiming that he owes half. He doesn't owe half. That was never the agreement, according to what you gave me. According to what you gave me, and in your own hand, you say, this is what you owe me, $1,600, not $2,600. Well, Your Honor, if I can explain, the reason why I said half is only me and my brother were included in life insurance policy. My I sister don't... was not named on it, to... and it was only for $5,000, so... Sir, listen carefully so, to me. I mean, if we listen put our money together, we could have paid for it. Listen carefully to me. That has nothing to do with you. Exactly. The, the, the same with his proceeds of your mother's final resting should have come out of the estate. That way, it would have been born equally between the three people who will profit from the estate. You understand? I understand, Your Honor. Very good. So, if you understand that, the math is simple. If he pays a third, you get your sister to kick in whatever she's getting back from the $25,000, and everybody is equal. Well, Your Honor, I, I mean, you're already getting the vibe that this guy is the biggest bum. To live just a second. His mother just a second. Off of his just, let me explain something to you. That is unnecessary here. Unnecessary and really quite stupid. Stupid. You handed me evidence, sir, that you made an agreement with him. He asked you what he owed. You told him. Yes. Sixteen hundred dollars. That's what you told him right. that he owes you. Sixteen hundred dollars. That's correct. And each of you are getting a certain amount of money for nothing from your mother. I'm going to ask you some questions. Prior to her death, when was the last time you saw her? When was the last time you saw your mother? Month and year? I honestly do not recall, Your Honor, because Okay, her just a home... second. Was it in the decade that she died? Yes. Okay, well, she died in 2021. So when did you see her? Probably several years before that, Your Honor. Well, so to... you didn't I... see her in the decade before? Your Honor, you have to understand, her house was infested with bed bugs. Pay careful attention to me. I asked you some questions. Yes. My question was, when was the last time you saw your mother? So you hadn't seen your mother in a decade. When was the last time you saw your mother? I saw my mother frequently, Your Honor. It was May, Mother's Day. Okay, Mother's Day of... 2021. And, Your Honor, I did... Shh, I'm not speaking to you. March of 2021. Prior to that, when did you see your mother? November 2021. Wait a minute. How Just, could you hey. see her in November 2021 if she passed in August of 2021? In November 2020. Okay. May 2021, November of 2020. Prior to that, when did you see your mother? I saw her frequently because... No, she... no, not frequently. Month and year. I don't have the... Did you see her every month? No, Your Honor. Did you see her every two months? About that, yes, Your Honor. Okay, well, between May and November, that's more than two months. Mm -hmm. That's when you can remember. Yes, Your Honor. So it would be fair to say that whether he took great care of her and whether the house was clean or dirty or anything else, your 86-year-old mother lived with your brother, whether you like him or not, and you were totally disinterested in her. You're the one who started this, sir. I was about ready to finish this case, but when you say he's a bum, I say, you know what? This guy's got to be put in his place. He may have been, but he was the bum who took care of your mother. You started it.
Sean Rubin is accusing his brother, Randall Rubin, of not paying his share of funeral expenses. Randall claims Sean spread multiple lies about him. So it would be fair to say that whether he took great care of her and whether the house was clean or dirty or anything else, your 86-year-old mother lived with your brother, whether you like him or not, and you were totally disinterested in her. Well, that's not true, Your Honor. Well, I want to know when, if you didn't see your mother in a decade, in a decade, and she had failing health, I would say, as a child, you were totally disinterested in her. I did visit my mother after she had kidney replacement or kidney surgery. I visited her after her surgery. We both did. I just a second. Do you understand where I'm coming from, sir? I do. I have children and grandchildren, right? Sure. Ten years is a long time. That's a grandchild. If she didn't see me at least once a month, she better keep her fingers crossed that I don't change my will. Well, Your Honor, I'm sure that Sir is very close to you, where we live out of state. Just a second. We both have you actual real jobs. Just a second. If her father didn't visit me at least once a month, and we live in different states, he, too, would check the will. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. So what I'm telling you is, if you don't see your mother for 10 years, you are a disinterested child. You're the one who started this, or I was about ready to finish this case, but when you say he's a bum, I say, you know what? This guy's got to be put in his place. He may have been, but he was the bum who took care of your mother. No, no. Oh, absolutely not. Oh, really? Did your mother have full-time nursing care for no. the last 10 years? I really the answer is that. either yes no. or no. It's an absolute she no. She declined. That's not what I asked you. Not but she declined. Did she have full-time nursing care? That's a yes or a no. Yeah, no. Your Honor. Okay, so if she didn't have full-time nursing care and she was in poor health because, based upon your blurted-out answer to me, you thought she should have full-time care. Yes, Your Honor. Right, but she didn't. So he took care of her. You don't like the way he took care of her. That's your prerogative, but you let him take care of her. And you went about your business in your own states where you live, and he took care of her. And you didn't like him, and he may have been a sponge and a bum. You started it. But you were not interested enough in your mother to move next door to her or to have her move next door to you when she got sick. Your Honor, Somebody else I actually took... did ask her to move in with me, and she declined. Right. She didn't want to live did with you. Leave. There had to be a reason for that there if is. she was being abused. Do you just Your Honor, there is. Unless... Do I look like I need help from you? No, of course not. Then I want you to be quiet. Yes, ma'am. You owe him $1,600. That's it. Not twenty six. what he's asking you. Put it down. I have a counterclaim. $1,600. And I'll hear your counterclaim. Thank you. Which Your sounds Honor. a little ridiculous to me. I'm finished with you. $1,600. That's what you owe, except for the counterclaim, which I'll hear. The well, counterclaim is that they posted something on the internet that says that there were bugs in the shoes you were selling. If that's... It... Just a second. Quiet. Your counterclaim says that he defamed you in your business because he wrote on the internet that there were bugs in the shoes you were selling. I couldn't make that up. Let me see. Maybe I did <laughs> make it correct. up. You're correct. Yeah, exactly he posted he that there were bugs in the shoes I was selling. <laughs> he also uh, put that I impregnate Hispanic women. Oh, just a second. First of all, that's not in here. It's right bugs, here, ma'am. It's not in my answer. So it, I want to see where he wrote. And who knows what you're doing in Mexico? I have no idea what you're doing in Mexico. Show me what he wrote about the bugs in the shoes that you're selling. Giving me a whole lot of nonsense there that I'm not going to read. It, it, it's not. You these give are, me... These are, these are the posts that he put online. I these only also, want to... These are also letters from my mother in her own... I'm not reading the letters from your mother. Okay. I'm reading a post or more where he says there are bugs in the shoes you are selling. Yes. Period. Do you want to hear the audio that he sent to one of my employers? No. I want to see where he wrote there are bugs in the shoes you are selling, which is what's in my answer. Right here, ma'am. May I have it, please? And I do have a restraining order on him as well. I'm not interested in your okay. restraining order. Okay, so this has nothing to do with anything. I'm going to give this back to you, and if you don't hand me exactly what I asked for, I'm it's dismissing... Their, I'm not their... reading all that drivel. I asked you for one post. Your Honor, if you'd like to... I don't want to hear you. This is what I wrote. I you don't want, to see it. want... This is not your case to prove, sir. Okay, I'm just trying to be honest. Here you go, Your Honor. This is one that he... Thank you. 
Wrote Don't tell me, me one. Just give me the posts about shoes. This has nothing to do it, it, with shoes. This one is in well, Spanish. If you show me one more thing that doesn't say bugs and shoes, yeah, I'm just dismissing your case. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Please look at this one. It is in Spanish. Well, no, that's your problem. The counterclaims dismissed. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $1,600. We're finished here. Thank you very Thank much. You, Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah. This court is adjourned. I'm very pleased with the judge's decision. I think she made the right decision. I wasn't really thrilled. I'm just kind of glad it's over. I never want to see my brother again. We're a very estranged bunch of people. We do not like each other. She didn't raise him right. She raised us right, and we're going to do the right thing on behalf of our mom. First and foremost, I will visit you every month, every <laughs> week, every day, if that's what it takes. <laughs> but in all seriousness, this case shows how foolish it is not to memorialize your wishes for the end because it creates a heightened sense of stress at a time when emotions are already running high. And first rule of wills, trust, and estates class is always have a will. So it doesn't matter how much you have, how little you have. It's important, your wishes, and, and to prevent situations like this, your loved ones having to go through. Yeah, and be angry with each other. I mean, they don't love each other anyway, <laughs> but to be angry with each other, if you can avoid that. Even young people, Sarah, who have put anything together. Yeah. You have a will? I do. There you go. I wouldn't want my loved ones going through that. So, yeah, you have to take the time and write it down. And, and yeah, that's really all you can do to avoid the situation. Princess Davis is suing photographer Tavares Long for breaking their photo shoot agreement. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case number 2013, Davis versus Long. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Davis, what do you do for a living? I'm a language interpreter. For whom? For hospitals or law offices. Is it your own business? Yes. What languages do you speak? Spanish and Portuguese. Tell me how you met Mr. Long, who was a photographer. I met Mr. Long um, as part of a social cycling group that I'm a part of. And so they have weekly cycling rides, and he's always there, and I'm usually there, too. So according to what I read in your complaint, you got to chatting with Mr. Long, and sometime in October, of 2021, so not quite a year ago. The two of you discussed him taking photographs of you to be used on his website, on his business website. That's a photography website, sir? Yeah, but we didn't discuss, you know, we just discussed doing a photo shoot together. Yeah. Well, that's what I said. Yeah, don't, yeah, yes, ma'am. Don't say no unless, you know. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. I already live with people who <laughs> say no just to say no. <laughs> you discussed taking photographs of her... Yes, ...for your website doing a photo shoot, and in exchange for that, she would get a free copy of the photographs. That's what you discussed? Yes. At a fair statement? Yes. Is that a fair statement? Of, of some of the photos, yes. Well, no, well, we, we... I don't think that you said some of the photos. You, you said, no. you sit for a photo shoot for me that I can use the pictures on my website. That's not what... Well, are you in the business of photography? Yes, ma'am. Is that how you make your living? Yes, ma'am. People paying you to take Pictures of their wedding, communion, bar mitzvah, bat mitzvah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. Right? Mm -hmm. Anything else? <laughs> Birthday parties. Uh, and in order to do that, you have to show off your best work. Yes. And if you ask a model to do that so that you could use a model, just as you get paid for your work, so would the model. Right. So what you did with her was barter. You bartered her time in sitting for a shoot for her to get something in return, which were copies of the photographs. That doesn't mean that she owns them. You were free to use them on your webpage, on your business webpage. Am I outlining your case? Yes, more or less. Okay, so now I will summarize what the case is about. According to what I've read, the two of you looked at the photographs and you picked out about 30 that you liked, according to somebody. He got you the 30 pictures, but then you saw a picture... Don't shake it. You saw a picture that you didn't have that was posted on his website that he hadn't given you. Well, he hadn't given me any of the pictures. He, I was able to view some. Were 30 photographs downloaded so that you could see them on your computer? No, he sent me a Google Drive link for 29 photos... OK. ..that Do I couldn't just... download. I can only view. OK. Did you tell him that you couldn't download them? Yes. Did he repair that? No. So now you want to be compensated to the tune of $2,500 for using your pictures on social media. 
Uh, That's what you ask for in your case. Yes, for using them to promote his business. That's and, okay. Well, you knew he was yes, going. I did. Okay, Miss Davis, you knew that he was going to use the photographs to promote his business. That was your contract. Mm -hmm. That's not uh huh. That's a yes. Yes, ma'am. That was your contract. Your complaint is that he did not fulfill his entire end of the bargain by getting you copies of all the pictures. Yes. Okay. And you have a nonsense counterclaim, Mr. Long, mm -hmm. because you want money for compensation for a photo shoot. That was never... No. Well, what I want money for is, is a nonsense counterclaim for a nonsense suit. No, no, what, no. What I, what I want money for is if she wants me to, because she actually, well, you, I want you to take down every photo and delete everything you have. Well, if you want to, that means I want, if you want to own the rights to the photos, this is what it's going to cost you. You've not just a second. She doesn't want all the rights to the photos. That's what she, she can't. That's what she called but, me saying. Okay. Mm -hmm. She, but she can't modify the agreement. I agree. If I find, which seems absolutely logical, and I don't know why you just wouldn't do it, give her the photographs which you bargained for so that she got copies of them in exchange for you using them on social media. That seems to be perfectly simple, Mr. Long. Did she ever notify you that she couldn't download no. the 29? You know, she notified me. I, so in May of this year, which is Women's History Month, I was daily, I, I you know, post some photos of women I took photos of and just kind of like honor them for Women's History Month. So on like May 5th, with 5th day of, of Women's History Slow Month, down. I posted. Slow down. Yes, ma'am. Sorry about that. So I posted three photos of her to say, hey, I want to honor, you know, a friend of mine. It's Women History Month. You know, just kind of just, you know, I thought I was doing a nice thing. So then uh, she calls me. I was picking my daughter from school. Well, she emailed me. I don't know if she emailed me Does first. Does this have something really important to do with yes. this case? Yes. yes. Oh, well, I'll get there, please. Yes, I'm not interested in right, right, your right. daughter so, up from school. So, but you asked me when did she notify me. So I, five months later, she notified me in May. The photo shoot was in November. So? So but you asked me when did she notify me. It was, she told me this right as all of this, uh, as she wanted to, to Mr. start Long, an argument. Mr. Long, yes, you can talk from today till tomorrow. I know. What I'm the, long What the agreement yes, is clear. She sat for you. How long was the photo shoot? Almost, don't, don't look at me. How long was the photo shoot? Almost five hours. How long was the photo shoot, Mr. Long? No, it was about no. no. About three hours, about three hours. Okay, so anywhere between three and five hours. Ma'am. Anywhere between three and five hours. Well, it definitely wasn't five. She said... It was one time, so it got dark early. We were outside at uh, Cascade Nature Preserve, so... I'm getting it was, actually it was, it was, so it was, bored I know, with I'm you. I know, but, yeah. It was, anywhere it was, between it was. three and five hours. And if you shot a hundred pictures during that time... Oh, no, or much more. So, so we So did, how uh, many pictures did you shoot Probably three, four hundred. I okay. mean, it was a lot. Just so, a step. Mm -hmm. Not so. No, yeah, well, because this is important. You know? so what happened is, is that we did a lot of motion shots. So, which means that I put the camera in high continuous shutter mode. So, while she's moving, I'm capturing just, I'm just taking photos, right? And then we choosing out of which, out of which motion that look best. You know? Oh, just a second. Yes, ma'am. You have to send her the copies of the photographs that you took. That was an agreement, Your Honor. Because why would I send you every photo and I'm going to have a workout that with my name on it that something... Because you blinked and we move and we take an action shots. I'm, you know, I'm never, Just a second. Never do you think... Someone do you photo. think... Hey! Yes, ma'am. Do you think that this woman is going to put out a photograph anywhere that looks terrible of her? Yeah, see, that would be right. That would be ridiculous. See, we have we have a difference in in opinion, right? She may think this is a nice one, and I, as a photographer, I'm like, and another photographer sees it, they're like, this is kind of garbage, right? And so I I'm never going to give somebody something that I, I wouldn't approve of myself. Oh ever. yes. Well, what I'm telling you, Mr. Long, was that was not your agreement. Yes. You, Okay, then I'm going to, in 30 seconds, mm -hmm. you were commiserating with each other from this cycle group, whatever it was, and I want you to tell me your memory of the discussion with the plaintiff about the photographs, about her sitting for you for a photo shoot. Then I'm going to hear hers. Quickly, what is your memory of the discussion, the initial discussion that you had with her over her sitting for a photo shoot? Don't make things up. 
no. Mr. Long, no, then no, just this, tell me. This is factual. Then Speaking just truth. tell me. Yes. So we we were at a social gathering. It was um, a holiday party for one of the groups that we, we are part of, right? So we were at this bar called Handlebar in Atlanta, and we were talking, and I was doing some shooting inside of the party, right? And she says, hey, we ought to shoot together sometime. That's not true. Yes, just a yes, second. Yes, yes, You're going to have a chance. Don't interrupt him. Just keep going. And yes. you understand, yes, I know the difference between yes, rain and someone peeing on my leg. Right. And I just know the difference. I, I've never peed on Okay. Me. Let's right. move on. Right. And so uh, we were at this... At so Park. you were at a party. Hey, you're taking pictures. And she said to you, hey, mm -hmm. come on, let's go. Yes. Hey, we should do a shoot together sometime. Okay. And I was like, that would be cool. Okay. Right? And then so she reached out to me. Um, so the Braves won the National World Series last year. She reached out to me a little before the Braves won the National World Series and said, hey, you know, would this day be good? And I was like, well, it's going to be kind of cold. This is going to be going on. So the day that the Braves, the World Series parade was, which was November 3rd, right? November 3rd is the day that we shot because after the Braves, I went and met her. Just a second. At, Do you have any idea how disinterested I am in these I facts? I know, I know, but... Okay. I, just, Mr. Long, Mr. Long. Head. Yeah. Before she got there, you had an arrangement. And if you can't tell it to me in a cogent way, I'm going to ask her and I'm going to believe her. Do you understand? I do. I'm looking for your version of the contract. Right. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. So just give it to me. I don't care who was playing baseball. I don't care who was in the finals. It means nothing to me. Princess Davis claims photographer Tavares Long broke their photo shoot agreement. Tavares is countersuing, saying Princess owes him for the rights to the pictures. Okay, you're at a bar, yes. you're taking some pictures. Yes. You're taking some pictures. She comes over to you. She said, How about a photo shoot? You say, Fine. Yes. I'm looking for your version of the contract. Right. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. So just give it to me. I don't care who was playing baseball. I don't care who was in the finals. It means nothing to me. Yes, ma'am. Just tell me the contract that okay. you had with her. There had to be a contract. Well, other than us verbally, there was no written contract. That we, doesn't yeah. have to be a oh, written so, so contract. So you want to just what we verbally said? Yes. So then after that, we agreed to, to, to meet up, right? And then once we finished shooting, because we never discussed how many photos were going to be sent, right, until we, we actually looked at the photos together, Your Honor. We looked at the photos. She said, oh, no, I don't like this one because there's oh, something... Oh, just a second. Mm -hmm. You looked at the photos on the date of the shoot? No. Well, we, when? well, she looked at some of them on the camera, like, but not every photo that on the uh, camera. But when it, did it you was, look? Oh, I sent it to her on November six. I emailed her. So November third is when we shot. November six is when I sent her the photos. How many did you send her? Twenty nine. Okay, but you didn't send her all of them. No, because that was an agreement. Well, I didn't hear the agreement. I didn't hear anything about because an agreement. We, we didn't have a specific I didn't, number. I didn't hear anything about an agreement. That wasn't okay, a specific good. Now, now okay. you have to be quiet. Yes, ma'am. Now, tell me your version. Make sure that I get exactly the case. Okay. On October uh, 15th, uh, we were both at a holiday event from one of our social groups, and he actually came up to me. And he was like, you're beautiful. I would love to shoot you. I'm trying to build up my photography practice. Um, and I was like, okay, what do you want to do? Like a, you know, barter thing where I get a copy of all the pictures and you can use them to promote. And he was like, yeah. He was like, we can talk about it this week. Oh, so he, what he said to us, yeah, we can talk about it this week. Mm -hmm. keep no, going. and we had keep another going. phone call. Keep going. To solidify that I would get a copy. No, just a, no, 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 oh, no. Don't sorry. take solidify. Solidify is a conclusion. Okay. What I want you to tell me is, after that meeting, you had another conversation. Yes. Did you call him or did he call you? I called him. Yes. And I said, okay, so I know you had talked about the shoot. Like, what, what were you interested in doing? I know you talked about the barter. And he was like, yeah, I'm building up my practice. I would love to shoot you. And I asked him, I said, okay, so I'm going to get a copy of all the pictures, right? Yeah, you'll get a copy of all oh the pictures. God. I asked him then, I said, do you have a makeup artist? Because I've done this agreement before she with other like, photographers. I, I would, like, I would like you to be quiet. Agreement. Hey, okay. I would like you to be quiet. I will. This is a pretty standard agreement with no, 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 models. Listen. Okay, listen. I'll go back to it. Let's, so, I'm so, not interested in that or the Atlanta Braves. Yes. So basically what it was is 
I would get a copy of all the pictures. I would also do... Not ba I don't want to hear basically. I want to hear what you said to him and what he said to okay, you. I, said, I don't want to hear anything else. I said... So and now I, you're shot. And I will get a copy not, of all the pictures just, just that he to said see, yes. Keep saying it again. I heard you the first okay. time that you would sit and you would get a copy of the pictures. Yes. And he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. As I can imagine him saying mm -hmm. to you. Yeah, but I, okay. I did. You get an A for annoying. Mm. <laughs> Which is not where you want to be here. It's not. Because this is really a very, very simple situation. Yes. Really simple. Of the pictures that you took of her, be very careful, because she has it. Of the pictures, the 29 pictures that you sent to her, did those 29 pictures contain all of the pictures that you ever put up on your website? Or did you use any of the other pictures that you took from the photo shoot on your website? Do you understand my question, Mr. Long? I do. Did you use any photos other than the 29? That's either a yes or a no. She told me yes, no, there's just one. Just a second, that's, not I'm she told me. That's what she told me. Well, Mr. Just, Long, yeah. not she told me. When you had a conversation with us subsequently, and she said to you, I saw you put a picture up on your website. It wasn't one of the ones you sent to me. A normal person who was a photographer mm -hmm. who was now having a dispute would go back to the photographs and see which picture she was talking about and look to see the 29 pictures that you sent. And you would said, yes, it was one of the 29 pictures that I sent to you. My question is a simple one. Were any pictures that were not turned over to her ever used on your website? So, I, 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 I want to be honest with you, right? So no, this, I want... That's either right. a yes or a no. Right, well, this, this is the thing. So no, there's this no thing. So conversation that she's Ms. talking Long, about... Mr. Long, Mr. Long, the the there's no thing. Yeah. There's no thing okay. to my question. All right. There's either a yes or a no. Were any photographs other than the 29 you sent her ever put up on your website? Not to my recollection, because... Okay, I, I, yeah. just a sec, so yeah. the answer is not to your recollection. Now, I'll come back to you, Ms. Davis. Mm -hmm. You did receive viewing copies of 29 photographs. Viewing Co only copies, yes. Not Rece copies, but access to a file, yes. Okay, and there came a time when, according to you, you saw a picture on his website that was not a picture that you had had a viewing copy of. Yes. Do you have that? Yes. Give me one second. And then the communication with him, if you have any communication about that do. photograph. Is this all clear to you, Whitney, this case? Is this clear to you? Is there anything that needs clearing up? Okay, that you is pretty clear. text <laughs> message. Clear. This one was the specific one that I didn't recognize. I had seen No, it. I don't want to know that you recognize it. They, oh. I want a picture that was not within the 29 photographs that he sent to you, and then any communication with him that you have via text message. That's the text message. That's a lovely photograph. Thank you. Yes, you have it for you. Text messages. You can also... Oh. Happy Monday sent you all the photos you liked back when we took them. Okay. So what she's saying to you here is that she feels very uncomfortable about you having pictures of her that she doesn't have copies of and having them accessible to you to post. I just want to finish this back and forth. Yes, ma'am. She does say, if you don't want to send her all the pictures, just delete them all from whatever hard drive you have and take her pictures down from any social media. Did you do either one of those things? That's what this back and forth seems to talk about. I no. didn't, and I was, no, I was okay. never going to do it. Because... Okay. Okay. Once, just a second. I, I, I didn't I, ask you if the answer is no. Okay, no. Where are the photographs now, Mr. Long? The, the photographs, um, I have, uh, I use, you know, uh, scan this, so they're on the SD card. So very easy to make another one and just give her a copy, is that right? No. What, it's hard? Is that hard, Sarah, to make a copy of that memory chip? What do you have to do? I don't think so. I mean, I've seen people do that before. They plug something in, they plug something in at the other end. And then right. one transfers to the right. other. Am I wrong? It's not right. hard, no. What? It's not. I think the way, the way... he's saying it's not impossible. He's oh, just not, not going to do it. Nothing's impossible. But one, I don't send all photos to anyone. I've never sent every photo that I've taken of someone. I've, I've never done it. Then, Mr. Long, I don't care what you've never done. Right. Then, shh. Mm -hmm. Why don't you try listening? Well, the one that tends to benefit 
the most from the contract business-wise is you. You see, these photographs are not her business. Do you want to use these photos for her business? I, I, do you see my mouth moving? Yes, ma'am. Why don't you be quiet and just listen? Princess Davis has accused photographer Tavares Long of withholding photos from their photo shoot. Tavares says he can keep the photos he chooses because he owns them. Okay, if there is ambiguity in an oral contract, mm -hmm. two things should happen. First of all, the one that tends to benefit the most from the contract business-wise mm -hmm. is you. That's not her business. You see, these photographs are not her business. She does... Do you want to use these photos does, for her business? I, I, do you see my mouth moving? Yes, ma'am. She works as an interpreter. <laughs> so she doesn't need for her job as an interpreter photographs like this. They're nice to have, nice to have to look through a book, nice to have professional photographs yeah. taken, I know. Sarah loves to do that. All right. But this is your business. It is. And if you put up why don't you be quiet and just listen? If you put her picture up on your website, you're the professional at photography so that you have to create a contract. You, not her. This is a sport for her. This is social. She models, you. She said, she said she models and she wants something for her portfolio. <laughs> she may want something, which is why she sat for you. She doesn't have the photograph, so you have two choices. Mm -hmm. Either you give her a copy of that drive that you have. You still own the pictures. Any time that she wants to use the pictures, you have to get credit for the pictures. Yeah, or... I'm never going to give somebody every photo because I don't want any work out there that is not standard for my, my, my business to be out there and somebody post it. We took action shots. I'm not giving you uh, shots and you blinking. Mr. You Long, it's like, Mr. Yeah, Long. Mr. Long. Mr. Long. Mr. Long, you came here and signed a document before you came into court yes. today that you were going to be bound by any decision that I made. Mm -hmm. If you read the contract that you signed, mm -hmm. that's what it said. Okay. So where do you come from? What city and state? Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia. And how did you get here? Flew. Yeah. And who paid for that? I'm assuming you did. Right. And when you got here, you stayed in a hotel. Mm hmm And I assume you want to go home to I Atlanta. Did. I do. Eventually. Hold on, you gonna... <laughs> No, I assume. And when you came here, sir, mm -hmm. you also got a fee, an appearance fee, is that correct? Correct. Right. And how much did you get as an appearance fee for trying your case before me? I can disclose that. What, disclose oh, it? Well, I'm asking you a question, well, you're I under oath. I thought you wasn't No, to listen okay. to me. I'm Don't sorry. look at her. Okay. Listen to me. All right. How much of an appearance fee are you being paid to have your case tried before me? $300. $300. And you'd like that $300? I mean, yeah. What? Yes, I would. Yeah. So this is what I'm telling you. I'm holding you $300 until she gets a copy of the hard drive with the photographs on it. Okay. So if you don't give it to her, it's going to cost you at least $300. bucks. you are just lucky I'm not taking your airline ticket as well. Is <laughs> when a contract that is verbal is interpreted, because there may or may not be a meeting of the minds in a verbal contract, mm -hmm. but it seems to me that you were, and you're the business professional, so you're loosey-goosey. You sit for me, and I want to use it for my website. Can I get copies of the photos? Yes, I can get well, copies. Yeah, happened. yeah, you can get copies right. of the photo. Then you sent her copies of the photos, and then you took down the site. It's not my fault that you didn't do anything. So this is, this is my judgment. She gets copies of the photo shoot that was conducted in November of 2021. She gets copies of those photographs. Anytime she wants to use any of those photographs for anything, any publicity, it has to have your name on it, so send it to her, who the photographer was, and you have to get credit for it. You own the photographs. They are your photographs, but she gets copies of them because I cannot ascertain, other than listening to you, I can actually hear you saying, sure, 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 you're going to get copies, you're going to get copies, and then you selected the ones well, you that you wanted to select. Anyway, that's my judgment. That's my judgment. You get copy, your counterclaims dismissed. We're finished. Thank you very much. This court is adjourned.
I don't agree with it. I'm glad that it's over. No photographer is ever going to send somebody 100% of any photo that they took. He owed me those photos. That was our agreement. I don't want work out there that doesn't represent me. I don't understand why anyone would want to hold photos from somebody that was doing them a favor. It just changed who I do business with. I mean, it's just like the judge said, why would I put a bad photo of myself in public? What they may believe is good may not be what I believe is good. It makes no sense. He's just a total liar. I thought I was doing something for a friend and for free. We weren't really friends. We were like social. Like, he's inflating that. Now that don't matter if it's free or not, I do put it in writing. Just go to a different photographer. Don't you waste your time. I think we have a difference of opinion on that one. Okay. My roommate from college is a professional photographer who has done sort of a similar arrangement with me, and I've learned a lot from her about the ins and outs of the photography business. And I know that a big problem for photographers is they don't want the raw, unedited, like the defendant was explaining, photos of out of, say, four or 500 out in the world if they haven't put their photographer edit or touch on it yet, which mm -hmm. I can understand if that's their business. So I if I were ruling, I would have maybe, it's hard to split the baby in half per se, but said 50 photos out of, you know, she only received the 29. So maybe if he had edited up to his standards, 50 of the photos and delivered her downloadable versions. But I understand that sort of rewriting history from a loosey goosey type. Well, it's rewriting a contract. It is an I actually see your point, but that would have required a lot of work for him. Yeah, but it, he is the businessman. He should have had the contract to begin with. Well, and if that's you're true. going to be making statements to someone that you're going to give them all the photos, even though that's against what I know to be standard practice, standard practice, practice then you're sort of out of luck. Then you're going to have unedited photos with your name attached to them. And as a photographer, you should really have more contracts in place for situations like this. With a clear understanding by both parties. Yeah, that's his business, and he really wanted to use them for business. Mm -hmm. So he should have had a more stable written contract that I could interpret. Other than that, I was really comfortable with an all or nothing. Yeah. Either If you're going to use them and you've already used them on the website, a reasonable view of both their testimonies was he said, sure, yeah, you'll get copies, yeah. and then later gave her just a yeah. select few. But I actually understand now the standard in practice, and I could have offered that as an alternative. Yeah. Okay, you should... Albert Lee is suing pilot instructor Ed Meyer for damage resulting from Ed moving his plane. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Case 2145, Lee versus Meyer. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Lee, you are an amateur pilot? Yes, I was a... Yes. And you owned your own plane? I bought it to train in, yes. When did you purchase the plane? In, uh, I believe, April of uh, 2021. Did you buy it new or used? I bought it used. What kind of plane is it? It's a Cirrus SR-22. 2010 type golf. What did you pay for it? I paid 420,000 for it, I believe. Is there a mortgage on the Yes, there is. How much? It's uh 2204 per month. You paid $425,000 for the plane. Yeah, I put a down payment on it. The outstanding balance is 347,000. The payment per month is 2000 okay. I, don't, I, don't need, I don't need the payment per month. I just wanted to know what you okay. paid for it and how much you put into the plane. Yes. The defendant is a pilot, licensed pilot, and he was giving you some training on the plane. Certified flight instructor, yes. It is your claim that at some point, you'll tell me when, that the defendant was operating the plane by himself. You weren't there, and he was moving it from one part of the FBO to another part, and he hit a cone and caused substantial damage to the propeller and the engine. And while you had... Your insurance did cover some of it. According to you, it did not cover all of the expenses. And you want Mr. Meyer to be responsible for that. So it's a simple question. Mr. Meyer, do you remember the date that you were operating the plane when Mr. Lee was not there? Yes. What date? It was in April sometime. April of 2022? Correct. Do you remember the date, Mr. Lee? Yes. What date? It's uh, April 22nd. Did that sound right? Yes. Okay. And from what I read in the papers, Mr. Meyer had, in fact, taken you out, but then the weather got bad. You decided that you would make your way home and that he would get the plane home when the weather was better. Correct. And that was on or about April 22nd. 
I flew home on a commercial flight the day before on April 21st. And you stayed with the plane? Yes. Now, would you agree, Mr. Meyer, that if, in fact, you hit an object with the plane, it would be your responsibility? Yes. Because it would mean that there was some sort of negligence involved. Right. And then that would be the issue of damages. Mr. Lee, you were not present when this incident happened. I was not... Not present. I was not present. Uh, I was able... No, you were not present. I was not present. That's the answer. Was this witness present? He was not present, but he was the one responsible for procuring the evidence on what happened and how the propeller was damaged. Who does he work for? He has his uh, own flight school, and he also manages my airplane in terms of the maintenance and the upkeep. Okay. Could you step up, please? Tell me your last name. Last name is uh, Williams. Mr. Williams, were you charged with gathering the evidence to determine what happened to the plane on the 22nd of April? Yes, I was. And you're paid a monthly fee by the plaintiff to that's, manage his plane. That's correct. Did you retain the defendant as an instructor or did Mr. Lee? That was uh, both uh, decided by Mr. Lee and Mr. Myers to fly for him. But you he, he's did an not... He's indep an independent contractor. At that you point. did not have anything to do with... As the manager of the plane, you didn't have anything to do with selecting Mr. Meyer. I, I, I did select Mr. Meyer to fly with, with Albert. You did? Yes. Okay. Because... Were you the one who introduced him That's to Mr. Correct. Meyer? That's correct. When, Mr. Lee, did you start to work with Mr. Meyer? It was probably a prior flight where we flew to San Francisco for a business meeting I had. After that, I believe it was... In what month? Roughly about the same month. In, in April? Yeah, in so April. So you didn't April. know him for a long time? No, not very long. I'm going to get back to you in a minute, Mr. Williams. Prior to the defendant... Had anybody else been an instructor for you? Yes. Uh, Clinton was my primary instructor, but I flew with uh, some other instructors as well. But it wasn't until the month that this incident occurred that you had been connected with the defendant? Correct. Okay. Now, sir, how were you advised that the plane that you managed was in an accident? Uh, I, was, I received a phone call from Ed saying that there you, was a problem. From whom? From Mr. Myers that there was a problem with the aircraft after he taxied and did the run-up and returned the aircraft back to Signature in Las Vegas. We notified and contacted a... Did you ask... What you would usually ask is what happened. Yeah, what happened. Just he, a second, and what did he say to you? He said that there were, he was having I instrument problems with the aircraft and he wasn't able to take off, so he returned the aircraft. At that point in time, I contacted a Sierra service center, I had two technicians go out and look at the aircraft, see what was wrong. At the time, the technicians found that they... Don't tell me what they found. Okay. You can't tell me what they found. It's hearsay. They send me pictures of the damage of the propeller. May I see the photographs? Okay, so that's a fresh damage. Correct. Can I scroll this? Yes, you may. Or it's just one. Okay, so you have a picture of that. You have a picture of the cone that has a slice in it. Correct. That's the object he hit. We also have a video showing the plane taxi and hitting the, the cone at the I'd like there. to see that as well. Okay. Okay. Let's see what we got. As you can see where the... Just one second. Mr. Meyer, is that a fair and accurate representation of where the plane was before you moved it? It should be on the, the last... On the far left side of that Learjet. Okay. Mr. Meyer, do you see that you went over a cone? It's interesting. I didn't even notice there was a cone. You may not notice it, but you see it now. Yes. Okay. Your hitting of the cone caused damage to that plane. I mean, you're not talking about flying a 747. You're talking about a little single prop plane. Right. Yeah, me, they like those planes you put together, we used to put together with rubber bands. I wouldn't put my behind in one of those planes for all the money in the world. Albert Lee claims pilot instructor Ed Meyer is responsible for damage after Ed moved Albert's plane. Okay. In all of my years of, of flying, which is pretty significant, I was an airline pilot too, I've never, ever experienced that in my life. Okay, but you see it now. 
Yes. It's not an on purpose. It's, you yes. know, that's why they call them accidents. We don't mean for them to happen. Right. We don't mean for them to happen, but you do see that the plane did hit a cone. Right. Okay. And I have photographs of the cone that has a slice in it, and the same kind of slice from one of the propellers. Now, so that's conceded that Mr. Meyer did, in fact, hit the cone, which, in all probability, caused damage to the plane, caused damage to the propeller. Now, tell me about your insurance. The insurance covered the propeller. They covered the uh, teardown of the engine. When uh, something strikes the propeller, they have to tear apart the engine, make sure the components... Do you have those, I that do. paperwork for me? I'd like to see it. Okay, so here is the insurance covered portion. And here is my covered portion that I had to come out of pocket to pick up the plane. Okay. And I can explain both invoices. And if you flip to the last page, that'll have the total. Insurance covered about uh, 60 something thousand for the propeller and the engine teardown. Okay. So the damaged propeller, Mr. Williams, causes you to have to take apart the engine, fix the engine, if there was damage to the engine. Am I correct? That's correct. The FAA requires anytime you strike an object with a propeller, the engine has to be inspected in the component parts. So the well, component parts. Of, of uh, the in, engine. In, yeah, of the damage, potential damage of the engine. Internal damage that could be caused by striking an object. Okay. The insurance covered how much, sir, Mr. It, Lee? It's, uh, sorry, it's on the uh, invoice, 60, I think it was 63,000, 64,000. It's on the last page. The last page shows... Shows a deposit of $63,000. Yes, that's it. The deposit was 40, balance due was 23. Did the insurance company pay the entire 63? The entire 63,000. $63,000. This is what was submitted to them? Yes. Okay, now I'd like you to take a look at this, Mr. Meyer. No, I'm going to actually ask Mr. Williams to take a look at this document. These are the items, Mr. Williams, that Mr. Lee says were uncovered. I would like you to go through all those items and tell me which of those items relate to the engine and which do not? Okay, is this the total? Carefully, because I'm going to potentially ask you about each individual thing, because there looks to me like some things that bear no relation to an engine. Okay, so most of the items that you see that are airworthiness on the airframe are the items that need to be inspected and or replaced from the teardown. So your item one, item two, three, five, uh, four... Item five, six, seven, eight. These are all items that the repair shop goes through the engine and assesses whether it needs... Well, tell me how the brakes would be impacted. I don't think the... impacted by hitting the... Which one would... And I don't know. But how brakes would be impacted by hitting a the nose cone. Brake lining. I don't know what that is. Okay. Yeah, some of these items, uh, Your Honor, such as one of these items, the brake lines, as you pointed out, it's probably not part of the... Well, that's break. what I want you to go through, sir. Okay. Do you understand? I want you to take a marker, a <sighs> pen, and circle, because I don't know a whole lot about okay. airplanes, but I know a little bit about airplanes. I know what's routine maintenance and what has to be taken care of because a plane either falls on its nose or falls on its tail, both of which I've experienced. Well, this is a small invoice. This is not your... This is a Mr. Williams... Don't ask him. I didn't ask you to have a conference with him. Okay. I asked no, you I... to look at that. You're the management company. I want you to strike those items that are not related to this accident and go through them very carefully because... Can I make a no. comment? No. Okay. Nope. To you directly. Nope. Okay. <laughs> can, I, can I ask you something? Can you ask me something? Yeah. Well, they should tell you those cones are made of plastic. I don't care. They're heavy cones. You hit the cone. And the plane flew perfectly fine before you hit the cone. It didn't run after you hit the cone. You don't have to be a genius to figure out the cone caused... Your hitting of the cone caused damage to that plane. I mean, you're not talking about flying a 747. You're talking about a little single... Pro There's a single prop plane? Right. Yeah. Me, they like those planes you put together. We used to put together with rubber bands. I wouldn't put my behind in one of those planes for all the money in the world. The only items I can see, Your Honor, are 
two items that may not be related to the accident, items seven and eight. Okay, may I have that back, please, sure. sir? And you are familiar with planes, sir, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So what you're saying is item... The circled item. Seven and eight. Correct. So we have... There's a, a couple of... Invoices. We have right and left main gear, but it was, it was 143 plus... What about item nine? Pitch, trim, jab, nut, loose. What is that? Probably what they do during the inspection and the teardown, they go through the, the aircraft itself, make sure it's airworthy. So they probably caught another item or two. You can probably put that on an uh, item that mm -hmm. wasn't part of the accident. The big ticket items are adding up all of these items, Mr. M Meyer, that probably have no relation to the accident which you caused correct still bring the total amount to more than this court's jurisdictional limit can you tell me sir why your insurance mr williams let's go back to you you manage okay. this plane can you tell me why mr lee's insurance didn't cover all the damage to the plane a lot of the prospective renters or, or instructors that everybody uses or we used in this case have their own carry their own insurance for this type of incident their insurance covers basically downtime loss of operation, or in this case... Uh, you mean Mr. Meyer? Yes. Would have his own... Do you have your own insurance? No. No. Don't you do a check to find out if they have their own insurance before you recommend um, someone? He, he had insurance, but it was lapsed. If you have insurance that's lapsed, then you have no insurance. Yeah, that's correct. So you're lucky that he's not suing you. Albert Lee is accusing pilot instructor Ed Meyer of hitting a cone and damaging his plane. Ed says Albert was already paid by his insurance company. Okay, Mr. Williams, you were the one who recommended That's Mr. Correct, Meyer. That's correct, did. Don't you do a check to find out if they have their own insurance before you um, recommend someone? He, he had insurance, but it was lapsed. Well, that, he didn't have insurance. I get that all the time. If you have insurance that's lapsed, then you have no insurance. Yeah. Uh, as a flight school, we, uh, our instructors are required to carry the insurance. Okay, but that didn't we... happen here. That's correct. So you're lucky that he's not suing you because you managed the plane for him. And you, you recommended him, Mr. Williams, you know. It's, it's... When you have a management company that manages your plane, they're supposed to make certain that if you have a certain kind of plane that you have pilots certified to fly those kinds of planes. And if they give me a list of pilots, and those pilots aren't certified to fly the kind of plane that I might have, then yeah. it's the fault of the management company. In this case here, the, uh, the plaintiff and the defendant were working together as far as their payment and their fees well, they were going to okay. charge. Well, that's okay. That's okay. They may have been working head to head. I mean, it was, it was Mr. Meyer's fault, but I'm just telling you that Mr. Lee relies on your advice, what business are you in, Mr. Lee? Uh, I do commercial real estate. I sell shopping centers and office buildings. Okay. That's not his business. That's why he hires you. And if he hires you, he asks you for recommendations as to where to get the plane repaired for an instructor. Now, the fact that he may pay him independently, he's relied on you for information. So I suggest, Mr. Williams, that you tighten up your ship a little bit. Mr. Meyer, you're responsible to the plaintiff for the damage that you caused his plane. Why did you let your insurance lapse? It had lapsed. I just didn't even realize the fact that it had lapsed. I just realized the fact that when this came about, that's what happened. Well, when was the last time you paid premiums? Probably a year before that. Anything else you want to tell me, Mr. Meyer? Uh, you owe him $10,000. You caused the damage. You have to fix it. Judging for the plaintiff, we're finished. Thank you. This court is adjourned. I understand her point, the fact that she, what she saw. I thought she's very fair. These cones are made out of plastic. It's hard to believe. Uh, it sounds like a gunshot when he hit the cone and uh, triggered several warnings. And for him to say he had no idea, it's, it's uh, a little bit hard to believe. They don't have much weight to them. With the loud bang after you hit it, uh, it's quite obvious that you should have stopped. <laughs> 
shut down and inspect the damage. There normally is never a cone at the 12 o'clock position. They're at, the, they're at the left side and the right side. They place cones all the way around the aircraft, and it's part of your responsibility as a pilot in command to do a walk around pre-flight, make sure there's no object in front of your aircraft. When I taxied out halfway down, that's when I recognized there was an ICAST message that came on. I finally got it back, and uh, no more student pilots uh, won't uh, let any CFIs fly for a while. You know what I thought about in this case, Sarah? That lay people have to look at something, lay people, and while I'm a judge and have certain expertise. I have no expertise in reading slips that show what's been done on a car or, or an airplane or a train or a boat. But we but have it's, common sense. But we have common sense. And your brakes are not part of an engine. Mm -hmm. You know, you have an engine job and then you have a brake job and you have a... I saw where you were going. <laughs> different kind. Of, and, you know, if you have an accident that impacts on the right driver's door. If you put in a new wheel casing in the left rear door, well, that has yeah. nothing to do with an accident. Probably just an oversight. He did state that those two items were not part of, you know. He did. He did at the end. But he did. it just feels a little uneasy when they try and slip those things in there that just common sense doesn't ring mm -hmm. true that it comes from the same Yeah, stands. you know, front, back, you know, yeah. the head of a horse, the tail of a horse. <laughs> doesn't fit in. And there's really no difference between not having insurance when you're driving a car and not having insurance as a flight instructor. Yeah. yeah that's pretty serious. That's... I would think there would be a more rigorous check on that before you get behind an aircraft, well, the wheel of an aircraft. <laughs> absolutely. You would think that there would be. Yeah. As Florence... ...doing his former friend, Lawrence Sr. Sr., for money he gave Lawrence to run a boys' basketball team. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, everyone. Hello, Judge. Case 2167, Gabriel versus Senior. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Gabriel, it's always exciting for me when I find a case that I can't relate to based upon my own personal experience. And this has to do with sports. Yes. And those people who know me know that I'm really a non-functioning American when it comes to sports. I understand baseball, but nothing else. However, I have a little bit of experience with people. So you have a son, that would be you. Could you stand up for a moment? Who's tall, now you can sit down, and who likes to play basketball. Yes, Your Honor. And he's been playing basketball for a long time. Well, most sports stopped at the start of the pandemic. And he was playing for a team. Yes, Your Honor. I know that I'm going to get fuzzy on this eventually so far. I'm holding up OK. So he was playing for the team. The team closed down, as did most other things. And the pandemic is sort of winding down. And sports are coming back. And you wanted your son to play basketball because this is your senior year in high school? No, I'm a freshman in college, Your Honor. Last year, so this happened last year? Yes, I was a senior. So this happened last year when he was a senior in high school and you wanted him to play because he enjoyed it and because you thought somebody would find him? A Most, scout. Mostly the enjoyment, but there's always a chance for the scout. Okay, and you know, you're his father and fathers always think that their sons are uber talented and maybe could be one of those quiet self-starters who turns out to be the hero on the basketball court. I have a grandson who plays baseball, and he plays baseball pretty well. He plays in college. His father follows him around from one game to another <laughs> like it was a full-time job. I can relate to that. It is. Well, your son wanted to play. There was no team. The defendant was a basketball coach who you knew. Yes, Your Honor. Whose team was also... Teams, the teams that he coached were also defunct because of COVID. So far, correct, Mr. Senior? Yes, ma'am. So at some point, you approached him and said, I'd love to start up this team again because I would like my son to play ball. He wants to play ball. And nobody else is doing it that I know of. What would it take to restart a team that could be part of a league or play other teams? You know. Yeah, you're right. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Is that close? Yeah. You're close. You're close. Yes. Close enough. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. So you talked about an amount, and Mr. Senior 
Yes, ma'am. Said I can start the team up for $8,500. Yes, ma'am. You, who wanted desperately for your son to play ball his senior year, said, I'm going to give you the money. You gave him $8,500. So far, correct? Uh, 8200 It's 8500 Your Honor. I have the check right here if you'd like it. Okay. If you have the check, cash it. So it's $8,500. The team only played one game or one tournament? No, it was actually uh, four, tor four tournaments in total for that season that we played. And how many are you supposed to play? We had planned on six in total. One would be out of state or far away. No, no. How many games were supposed to be played by your son's team being coached by the defendant? So a tournament could have three games. So, and that takes over the course of a weekend, a Saturday and a Sunday. So, a tournament could a be three tournament games. tournament is three games. Could be four as well if you're, if you're successful. Okay, so you were supposed to have four tournaments? We were supposed to have six tournaments, and we did have four. Okay, so you played most of the games? Yes. And then the team was disbanded? Yes. For whatever reason, may or may not be relevant. So how much money do you want back? You're suing him for $4,800. Right. Well, you know, math is my second non-strong suit. Yep. But if you paid him 85 and you played two-thirds or three-quarters of the games that you were supposed to play, why do you think you would be entitled to $4,800 back? Because I also um, fronted the money for the uniforms. Well, that was spent. And the graphics. Well, that the, was spent. In addition to the $8,500. I understand that, but that was all spent. The uniforms, the players got. Right. Right? And they kept them? The players kept some, and, and the defendant has the rest of them. Okay. Do you want them back? I do not. Well, he'll give them to you back if you want them, because he's not using them. How do I know that? This is his team, his organization. He, it's, he, a it's a non-for-profit company. Okay, let's deal with this slowly. We're dealing with the math first. Do you have, Mr. Senior, do you have any of the uniforms? No, ma'am. I never collected the uniforms. He Did you full have? possession. What? Well, he had sole possession of the uniforms. So you don't have any uniforms? No, he's the one that handed them out. Okay. Did any of the players give them back to you? No, none of them gave them So you don't have any uniforms? No. He doesn't have any uniforms. Okay. But, Your Honor, it didn't cost $85 to, start to run the team, which is, that's my... Just that's a my... second. Now, what we're talking about, sir, your $8,500 went to have six tournaments. You had four tournaments, right? Yes. Whether or not you get your money back is a whole other thing. But the uniforms were purchased. That you don't get back. The advertising graphics were done. That you don't get back. But Whether it's a four or a that six. Was his, that was his team's name doesn't on it. Doesn't matter. What difference does it make? Majority did not pay. You have anything that requires that they pay in a contract? Uh, that would be Coach Larry that he does, and he passed out those to the kids. No, he didn't put in $8,500. You did. Jason Gabriel claims his former friend, Lawrence Sr. Sr., owes him money after they started a boys' basketball team. Now, can you tell me why the tournaments were cut short, sir? There was a number of reasons, Your Honor. One of them was uh, right from the start, both me and my other son tried to discourage Mr. Giamni about forming a team of that age group. Okay. I don't want to get back into that, sir. You took his money, you played four out of the six tournaments. How much were you paid to coach out of this $8,500? I wasn't paid anything. It's, Did you? It's more of an administrative cost. What administrative costs? Uh, scheduling tournaments, gyms, gas, transporting kids that didn't have rides. More than half the team was not supported by their family. At least one kid was Well, homeless. was there an accounting that... You asked for, sir? Yes, that, and that's my, that was my initial response to Coach Larry, was, yes, he told me $8,500 to start the team. Now, I'm asking you an and accounting at the him, end of the day. I asked him where the money went. Like, could he account for $8,500 in addition to $1,600 that other kids paid to play? That's how I was going to get my money back. It wasn't just, I'm going to give you the money and you go do with it what you want. He told me it was $8,500 to start the team, and I would get my money back. Oh. From what source? The kids pay to join the team. Okay. How many people were on the team? We had as many as uh, 14, maybe 16 come through. To trials. They didn't play. I'm sorry. How are you doing, Your Honor? How am I doing? I've been better. <laughs>
You're his son? Yeah, I actually run the oh, program yes, yes. with him. Yes. Okay, good. So how many young men were playing basketball? On the team that you're talking about that's in question, I believe there was any, as many as 10 to 12 that actually came. The numbers vary because we're talking about 18-year-old children that come and go as they please. They don't really want to be 18 that. 18-year-olds are maybe children to their parents. They're not 18-year-old well, children. When it comes to this, then well, the responsibility part, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm old, I guess. There are children to me still. Sorry. What I want to know is, did you have a contract with him? A written not. contract? I did not. You just said, here's your $8,500, and I'll get my money back when the kids sign up and pay their dues. How much do they pay each to join the team? Coach Larry um, set that number at $600 per player. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Can we tell you where that number comes from? Over the years, because we've been doing this for over 20 years, the cost, the average cost to run a team for a full season, we averaged it out to be about $600 per kid because on a 10 to 12 man roster, 10 being the least you should have. How does he make money? We don't make money, I'm sorry. We don't make so any money. So you don't this... make any money, you just do this for the love of the sport. He grew up in a basketball family, he's played basketball all his life. I have, I've been in a sports family, my brother has, and we just love sports. So this is not a money-making operation? Not at all. We probably I... put in more money than we've made or put out in the program, I'm sorry. Go ahead, sir. Your Honor, I, I coach uh, high school football. Actually, his son goes to the school I coach. So I was aware of him, and I also coach baseball. So I just don't, you know, you're not going to make any money coaching new sports if that's what everybody thinks. Well, I'm just asking you. No, no, I'm, whether, I'm, I know that. I'm know just that. asking you, because there is a suggestion here that some of that money was to pay you as coach. Mm -hmm. And I just want to know whether that is, in fact, correct, whether any of this $8,500 went to you? Not directly, no. Talking about gas. Indirectly to pay for gas and yeah, pick up that Maybe a car repair. I only had one car at the time. Okay. So Mr. Me Gabriel, and my wife were retired. Can you, Mr. Gabriel, can you tell me if you have, since you have no written contract, yes. you have no written re contract requiring anything. You were supposed to start up a basketball team which he did. I assume you played, is that right? Yes, Your Honor. And you played in four out of six tournaments. Stand up next to your dad. Did you play successfully? I only played three out of the four tournaments. That's yeah. reasonable. But we, but That's, we were is successful. that normal that members... I don't even know how many people are on the basketball court at a time. Five at a time. Five. Five at a time. What? Five at each team at a time, so Five. total. Yes. Well, if you had 10 to 12 kids, you were what? What <laughs> I just tried, I tried to expose it to you before this case. I tried to put it on TV. I played the Lakers. So if I get back up to 2019, we met Coach Larry in 2019. I didn't just pick him out of the blue now. I didn't suggest that you picked him out of the so blue. So my son Gabriel. him in the past. Mr. Gabriel, you don't look like the man that would give some stranger $8,500 to start up a team not knowing him. Correct. Okay. I accept that. I just don't understand that as a... Are you a business person? I am. What kind of business are you in? I'm a contractor. Well, if you're a contractor... Yes. That I know. <laughs> you have contracts. Absolutely. You're a contractor has contracts. And the contract that you do, you build homes or you build... I, I remodel homes, yes. Okay. So the contracts that you do lay out with specificity what you're going to do, what the materials cost are, what the VIG is on it, you know, within a certain amount of yep. play... But it lays out everything that you're going to do. You're turning over $8,500 to the defendant, and there is nothing in there that suggests that with any specificity what he has to do to comply. He had to start a team, which he did, yes. right? Had to start a team, which he did, where your son played. Yes. Which he did. There were supposedly six tournaments, out of which four were successfully played, and your son played in three of them, right? Yes, Your Honor. So you should have been happy. Somebody got a chance to see him. If they did, anybody give you a basketball scholarship? I do play Division Three basketball in Brooklyn. Good for you. There you go. Did somebody find you at one of these games? No. How were you recruited? I did um, multiple showcases, and I won in Connecticut in particular. He's a good player, Your Honor. He's a good player. And so I was found through showcases that I did by my own. Okay, but you played, and. That was good practice. It was good. Yes. I don't know why it was disbanded after four tournaments. Do you? All... Do you? Yes. There was multiple players who did not want to play anymore because they were verbally abused by the coach, and they just 
were fed up, and then there was other players that were let play for free, and people just thought that was unfair. What so do you mean with not play for free? What does explain that to me? That they were just let on the team without paying. Oh, so some people were disturbed that some people paid to play and some didn't. Yes, Your Honor. Do you have anything that requires that they pay in a contract? Uh, that would be Coach Larry that he does, and he passed out those to the kids. No, I'm, I'm asking you for your... He didn't put in $8,500. You did. Here it says, use some fees to catch up on my mortgage. I assume that's your home mortgage. Correct, after the season was over. Well, you can't do that. You can't do that, sir. Do you understand? Jason Gabriel is accusing his former friend, Lawrence Senior Senior, of owing him money after their boys' basketball team ended. Go ahead, sir. I put the, the money to the team. He runs the team. I can't tell him how to run his team. No, would you have a contract, sir, that tells you what your $8,500 was to be used for and the expectation that you were going to get that money returned to you via fees that were paid to each individual player? That has to be it. And in the event that they don't pay, who's going to pay? Well, I do have a text message from the defendant saying, I did not use all the money. It did not cost $8,500. Okay, and I will pay I you back. That's what I would like to see. Of course, it was disbanded for whatever reason. All your reasons, sir, are hearsay. This what is, is your first name? Gianni. Gianni. The reasons are hearsay. Why people left, they didn't like to be yelled at, they didn't like some people. That's all stuff that I can't process as a jurist in my head. All I know is this is a contract case. So now he paid 8500 and did you, Mr. Senior, at some point say the $8,500 hasn't been all used up and I'll give you back some of the money? No, I didn't. Okay. And this is also a text message saying he used it for his mortgage and that he agreed to pay me $400 a month to pay back the Okay. Money. Coach, fees to catch up on my mortgage, use some fees to catch up on my mortgage, at least $1,500. And between operating costs, there is roughly $2,400 left. Correct. Well, that's what you wrote to him. Yeah, and I was willing to give him the money that the kids had paid up front. No, no, no. There is roughly not the money that the kids paid up front, sir. You say to him in your text, mm -hmm. after this was all over, because I assume that this is all over after the You're team correct. is just yep. banded, there is roughly $2,400 left. So I'm going to have to work out sort of a payment arrangement, if you don't mind, which means you didn't have the money. But it was left over and you spent it on something else. And it's here it says, use some fees to catch up on my mortgage. I assume that's your home mortgage. Correct, after the season was over. Well, you can't do that. You can't do that, sir. Do you understand? Okay, well, this acknowledges several things. It acknowledges that he used $1,500 to catch up on his mortgage, right? Mm -hmm. And that, according to you and according to your son, whether or not you took a fee for yourself, paying your home mortgage is a fee. Do you understand that, sir? I do. All righty. <laughs> so, I sure do. You sure do. So $1,500, did you pay him back the $1,500? No, because at that no. point... No, the answer is no. And you said even after the $1,500 that you used to pay your home mortgage, there was still $2,400 left. That's what you said in here. That's a yes. Yes, ma'am. Well, then you add 24 and 15 is 009 is $3,900. Yes. Even my rudimentary <laughs> math suggests to me that that is <laughs> a correct number. Well, that's minimally what you owe him, your mortgage payment and the $2,400 left. You're suing him for $4,800. Right. This acknowledges 39. Absolutely. Prove, prove to me any more. So I went back to um, Mr. Senior and I said, I didn't necessarily believe that it cost $5,500 to run the team. I said, so therefore, you owe me $5,000. I said, you need to either get, get a loan and pay me back, or he said, I can't get a loan. I can give you $400 a month. I'd like to see the I said, exchange. I said, if you're going to give I'd me... like to see the exchange. Just because you said, I think it's $5,000. And this is where he says, I'd like to pay you back.
This doesn't say anything about $5,000. And this is where I told him that he misappropriated money that was owed back to me, and this, that was his response. Just because you said it, he doesn't acknowledge here in his answer that it's $5,000. Silence cannot be construed as acknowledging $5,000. Even the math doesn't fit in. He played more than half the tournaments. So Can we see how much the tournaments cost yeah. then, please? No, I'm not bothering. That's nonsense. Put something in a contract. You're a contractor. Have a contract. Right now, he owes you $3,900. And not for the uniforms? No. That has his, his team No, he says he doesn't have the uniforms. Okay. And I didn't go to seven years postgraduate school to discuss a basketball uniform, a pair of shorts. And a pair of socks. I, I don't you, care. The uniforms are $1,000. Well, then somebody's <sighs> overpaying for a pair of shorts. Mm. $3,900. Judgment for the plaintiff. Thank you very Thank much. You. We're finished. Thank you. Court of adjourn. I think it was unfair. I'm glad she ruled somewhat in my favor. Because he sponsored a team. And yes, did I do it for my son? I did. But there was 11 other young men that I did it for. Fighting amongst each other. Poor discipline and the lack of uh, financial support from the kids. When you have a group of 18-year-old young men and you don't practice and you don't kind of reel them in and show them that you're the coach and that you run the team, it can get a little hairy. It is what it is. I did what I did for these young men. Sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. Me and Jason's are friends. I don't think this is a deterrent. Always have contracts. Okay, <laughs> so... I know that when we got the paperwork on this case that you really tried hard to give me <laughs> to give me a rudimentary lesson in basketball. I did. Those years managing in high school really paid off today. So yes, learned that's a right. lot. You managed <laughs> I did a basketball team, so I know a little bit about AAU. A lot of the kids that played at the school that I went to had previously played on AAU teams, so I kind of get What's the dynamic. What's AAU? Oh, amateur athletic union, AAU. I never would have figured that. <laughs> Me neither. So they played on a lot of AAU teams before coming to high school, so I know a little bit about the structure. And when I read it, it's a nonprofit organization that kids play in to get exposure, hopefully to move up to the next level of basketball. But to me, I read it as he was sponsoring the team for $8,500, sort of like how you see in Little League, you know, Johnny's Pizza across the front of the, of yeah, the no, team's uniforms. That wasn't, that wasn't this. But this seemed like a different type of setup and to go through the coach directly I'm not sure the very specific structure of who gets paid and who doesn't who sponsors and who doesn't but definitely paying your mortgage out of an $8,500 that was meant to start a team seems a little outside yeah, well it's scope. outside the box especially <laughs> since both he and his son say that they do this without compensation mm -hmm. well you don't have to take money and put it in your pocket if you take money out of that account and pay your personal mortgage that's getting paid yeah. it was not a difficult case and the text messages made the whole thing a lot, a easier. lot easier now I know that there were five <laughs> people on is suing her brother, Jordan Thompson, and his girlfriend, Carmela Tertorelli, for personal belongings. Court, come to order. All rise. Be seated, please. Hello, Judge. Good. Case number 248, Bolio versus Thompson's Turcavalli. Thank you. You're welcome. How old are you, Miss Bolio? I'm 31. You have two kids? I have three children. Three. How old are they? I have a 10-year-old daughter and a two... Uh, sons that are four and five. What kind of work do you do? I stay at home with my children. And how long have you been staying at home? Since uh, my first son was born. So for five yeah. years? Yeah, my first son. And what had you done before? Housekeeping, and while well, I was pregnant with both my sons, I did do beets, beet harvest. There came a time, sometime I think, was it last year, that you needed a place to stay? Yes. 2021. Yep. Why? Uh, September 29th of 2020, um, me and my boyfriend had broken up, so I had stayed in a shelter. Is your boyfriend the father of either yes. one of these yep. two children? All, all my children have the same father. Uh, me and him had broken up at the time, and I left from where we were staying at the time, our living was West Fargo, to uh, the YWCA right away, the homeless shelter. And I was there for like six months, and during that time I had met Carmela, and me and her became friends, and I had introduced her to my brother. And then um, I moved away for a little while in April, and I came back mm, like the end of May, where did you move to? I went to Texas. What's in Texas? A friend. Where did you meet him? Uh, here in Fargo when I was 14 years old. So what brought you to Texas? That's where he was living, and he told me if I wanted to come live with him there, I could. You didn't have a job in Texas? He did. You? No, no, I did not. And from when to when were you living in Texas? I left April 15th, and I was there until, like... Of 2021? Yeah. 
And then I moved back beginning of June, kind of. And then... Um, beginning of June of the same year? Yes. So you stayed there for three months? Yeah. And you moved with your children? Yep, all three of them. Yep is not an answer. Yes, all three of my children I moved. Okay, so you to took Texas. them out of school in April? My daughter. Took her out of school in April? Yep, I did. Yep is moved. not an answer. Yeah. And we moved. You took her out of school in April to go to Texas to live with a friend that lasted two months. The fact is you took your daughter yes. out of school. I'm just fig trying to figure out who I'm dealing with. Yes, because I had nowhere to live. Well, there's a big place, but where do you live in what state? Minnesota. In Minnesota? Yeah. Well, there's a big difference between Texas and Minnesota. And also, there's only two months between April when school is still in session, and June, when it's over. Yes, I know this. Yeah, you know, you know this. You're aware of this. Yes. Okay. I set this up because I really want to find out what I'm dealing with here. Now, I sort of know. In any event, you had no place to go. Your brother contacted you. You contacted him, and he invited you to come and live with him. Yes, he did. And All over. right. That's what he did. You and your three children. Nope. Just me and my two boys. So you were going to live with your brother and his girlfriend, with your two children. Yes. You got there when? October. Of 2021. Yes. Case is relatively simple. Case involves your claim that they have property that belongs to you. And they have a cross complaint that they probably would not have brought, but for the fact that you're suing them. Because I think that they're just happy that you're gone. You moved in with them in October of 2021 and paid no regular... No. Regular I did not. rent. The agreement between me and my brother was to buy food for the house and to give him money when I can. Okay, now That's you weren't we working. About. Now you weren't working. So how are you going to buy food for the house? I was on assistance through Minnesota. So I got um, SNAP. So you got food stamps? Yes, and then I uh, had child support. Well, I was on child support, but I wasn't getting the money. I didn't start getting money until February of 2022. And that's when I start giving him Just money a second. every so often. In October of 2021, you were not getting child support. No. You were getting food stamps, yes. which you said you would share with your brother. Yep, I Who lives, them. not yep, is not an answer. Who lives with his girlfriend and how many children? We have no children. No children at all. We have dogs. <laughs> That's fine. So you were sharing some of your food stamps with your brother and his all girlfriend. All of my food stamps went to the house. Well, that's where you were living. Yep. Yes, it was. Yes, that's where yes. you were living, with yes. your two children. Yes. OK. What kind of work do you do, sir? I'm currently unemployed. And what does your girlfriend do? Uh, she works for a cleaning service. OK. Now, there came a time that you got a substantial amount of money from the government. What month and year was that? Just this past April. How much did you get from the government? It was taxes. Um... What kind of taxes? You haven't worked in five years. It was the child tax credit, and I did work when I, when no, I moved no, back no. from you Texas. told me you hadn't worked in five years. I want to know what you got money from the federal government for. That's what your brother says. And I was curious. That's why I asked you the questions about working. It is so slipped. don't make it up. It slipped as my we... mind. What? I'm sorry. So that I, didn't, I that did doesn't do slip your mind. I did housekeeping, laundry in a hotel when I moved back from Texas with my mother. Month? June. Month? You worked from June 2021 until we'll find out. Until like mid mid June because I did not have a babysitter for my children. So you worked for a couple of weeks. Yes. How much money did you get from the federal government in April of 2022? 11, like eleven thousand dollars from the government for child Ele tax credit. So you got eleven thousand dollars, not from working. Not that it slipped your mind, because two weeks may slip your mind because that's what you worked if you worked at all. $11,000, you got child care credits. How much did you get for each of your th three children? I only filed for two of my children. How much did you get for the two boys? I believe 3000 for each of them. That's 6000 Where's the other five? That came to me um, for the stimulus checks because I did not receive the last stimulus check. They said that my boys did not receive the, like, the refund that was coming to them for the stimulus too. So that was all. Oh, so your text. boys got. St let me let me understand. Let me understand why this country is in such a fiscal morass today. So you got three thousand dollars for childcare credit for each of your children, and the other five thousand dollars came because you went to a, an accounting firm, and they said, "Well, you should have gotten stimulus money for your boys." Yes. 
and you missed that, so we're going to put in for it. So they sent you another five, or they sent you... They sent it all together on one. Okay. All together on one. So that you had plenty of time to go and take care of. Yes. <laughs> right. Oh, uh, your judge actually have proof of how much she did get. Now, when you got this $11,000, that $11,000 was supposed to help get you through COVID. Yes. Paying your bills, paying for rent, buying clothes for your children. So you got this money in April of 2022, $11,400. Okay. And then you went on vacation. In what month and year did you go on vacation? April but... of 2022. So the minute you got the money, according to you... I started looking you for at... a vehicle. You bought a car? I was... I started looking for a vehicle. So you started to look for a car. Now, you've been without a car for a while, but you started looking for a car. Yep. And also in April, you asked your friend, your brother's girlfriend, if she would watch your two children... Me and her because... had a discussion before April. You didn't go until after you got the money. Yes. You knew you were getting the money before April because you were gone to apply for it. Yes. Yes. But, but when I got the thing where it said I was getting the money back, it didn't say that much. $11,400. So you decided to go on vacation. Where did you go? I went to Colorado. Where in Colorado? Up in the Denver area. How did you get there? I was with a friend and they drove. Male or female friend? Male. So you went with a male friend to Colorado for how long? I was there for a week. What does this friend do for a living? I'm not really sure. You don't know whether this friend works or not? I met him last year and I kept in contact with him throughout the whole year. And then we just got back in contact uh, February of beginning of 2022. And you don't know what he does for a living? I'm not really sure what he was doing for work. You have no right to give away any of her property, whether you think somebody deserves it more than she deserves it. That, hey, that doesn't require an answer. I'm telling you what the rule is. Alyssa Bolio claims her brother, Jordan Thompson, and his girlfriend, Carmela Turcherelli, owe for the value of her personal belongings. Okay, so you went away for a week. And according to what I read, you made arrangements with your friend, your brother's girlfriend, to take care of your two children, and you agreed to pay her $400 for the week. Yes. And then you went away for the week in April. Did you come back after a week? Yes, I did. On what date did you return? S the Saturday right before Easter. Date? April 19th, you're mm -hmm. right. And then what happened? I came home and I talked... April 19th. Yep, I came home on April 19th and I talked to my brother and Carmela. I stayed at the house for a little while because my boys were not there what when a I little, home. What a little while. I stayed at the house for maybe two hours and uh, got all my stuff into the house and my boys were not there. So I believe I went to my sister's house and to my mother's house and I did not know where my boys were. Just a second. If your two boys weren't in the house... I had asked them where they were. You asked them where you were and they told you it was a secret? No, they asked them where my children were and they said that they had went with their father. So you knew where they were? When I got home, I knew where they were. I didn't know that they had left previous to oh, me arriving Yeah, well, you got home from being away with a new friend in Denver and you said, where are the, my boys? Duh. Where are my boys? They're with their dad. So you went to your sister and mother's house, and then what happened? And then um, the next morning, we left to the cities, and The I next don't... morning? On, on Easter Sunday. On Easter Sunday, who's we? Me and the friend. What friend? My friend that I went to Denver with. So you went where? Uh, Minneapolis. How far a ride is that? Four hour drive. You intend to stay over there? No. We were going to go visit some of his friends and then come back. Um, but I, next thing I remember was waking up in the hospital. And I contacted my brother when I did. You have the hospital of... records? No, I do not. I contacted them. You have, and... just a second, you have an admission record. No. Do you have a bill from them? No, because I, just... I don't get billed. 
Of course you get bills. When you leave the hospital, they say either you owe us this amount of money, that's the, what you get when you're discharged from the hospital. You may not be able to get hospital records, but it would certainly be interesting, madam, for me to know what the next thing I knew after you were going with your friend to the cities to see some of his friends. You don't know anything until after you wake up in a hospital. I, Wouldn't as you soon be concerned? As I woke up, I contacted my brother. What date? I'm not sure. I don't remember exact dates. I mean, you have three children. What do you mean you don't know what date? I don't know the exact dates, and, but I did contact him as soon as I was able to, because I did not I mean, have my own you, phone. Don't you see how irresponsible this whole story is yes. for a person who has three children? Yes. How totally irresponsible it is? And what is sad about it is you appear to be an intelligent person who just seems to go from one place to another based upon, well... I used to know him in Texas. I used to know him in Colorado. I used to know him here. I'll leave my two boys with Camilla. And we, we don't have no children, so we're taking care of her children while she's out running around doing what I, I didn't ask you anything. Okay. I, I can actually visualize the picture, and sadly, so can you. What date did she finally contact you after she disappeared again? So after a Thursday after Easter Sunday. The Thursday after Easter Sunday, so that's the... The 21st of April is the Thursday after Easter this year. It was actually Monday the 25th. We got records. That's of... when I came home. I don't care. I just want to know when you showed up again. I contacted my brother, and I let him know what had happened. And then he was at, asking about our father, like I was supposed to go pick up our father. I don't care. Now let's get to the lawsuit. Now that I understand the characters that I'm dealing with, it is your claim that your brother and or his girlfriend took some of your property, didn't give you all your property that you should have had, because they finally said, we've had enough of you and your shenanigans. Goodbye. I did Good not idea. start leaving the house until that April. I was in the house the whole time with my boys. I've asked them maybe to watch them overnight a couple times, but that's it. I don't care. They had enough of you. You didn't pay rent. They could say to you, goodbye. We tried to do our best. You took advantage of us. Goodbye. Now... That being said, you stayed with them for how many months and didn't pay them any rent, any utilities? How many months? You and your boys? Four. Oh. Four months. Because I start paying my brother in February. Paying him what? Money. I gave him money. No, I don't want to know who gave him money. Rent. I know, I know that at your age, maybe we you think you're too young. On a state maybe of you're too an young. Amount. They either rent their house, they have a mortgage on their house, they have things that they we have to pay. We did not agree upon a, a set amount for every month. We did not Well, agree don't upon you it. think you should agree on a certain amount every month? You but just we came into $11,000. And it was actually way more than Shh. four months. You just came into $11,000. You've been living off somebody else's largesse. You just came into $11,000 that I gave you, or they gave you, but you certainly didn't work for. So you say to at least the person who you're staying with, listen, I'm going to give you a couple of hundred dollars a month just to cover my share of the expenses because you're two people and we're three. I gave him $400 when I got my taxes. As soon as I got it, I gave him money. Did you pay Camilla for watching yes, the did. children? Yes, I did. $400? Yes. Okay. Did she pay you? Yes. She says in her complaint that you sold a computer of hers. She says you felt that she owed you more money because you actually watched the children for a longer period of time than the week that she paid you for when she was... doesn't remember where she was. Did you sell her computer? I actually gave it away. No, I don't believe that. I, oh, I did. I... And it's well, not why would you give it away? That's just spiteful. Because it was Stanley and... Because what do you mean it was family? It was family. I am not your family. Sure. It I was... don't want you to speak. You have no right to give her things It away. wasn't hers, and I have proof right here. Whose was it? Yeah. Who knows? I guess her friends. But that doesn't matter. It was in her possession. It well, was in our possession, actually. It was. She left it with us. When she it, left. No. Left it at the house. No, no, no. That, you may think, is in your possession. She asked me to but... sell it for her. What? She even asked me to sell it for her. But it was not Just in your a possession. Second. It was in my room. Madam. Yes. If she asked you to sell it for her, then you don't give it away. Well, she, that, she, if, uh, if she says, sell my computer for me, then you sell it. Then you don't say, I can't sell it, so I'm just going to give it away. I gave it to one of the kids in the family that I thought could use it way more than her trying to use it to bail out her friend from jail. That's not... And she owed who, me a whole bunch more money. Who died and left you boss? Well, me and my, in the house, because it was our house. Can I ask you a question? Yes. You met her in a shelter. Yes. 
How long have you lived in that house that you're currently living in? August of 2018, to be exact. Before that, the lease was in my name. What part of I don't want to hear you? So you moved into his house? Yes. Right, so it's not your house. Well. It's his house. And since you're not his wife, you're his girlfriend for now, you have no right to sell or give away any of her property, whether you think somebody deserves it more than she deserves it. You're... That, hey, that doesn't require an answer. I'm telling you what the rule is. Oh. You wanted them to sell your TV, yes. jacket, and all of this is so that you can get them out of jail. Yes. Ah! Oh. Oh. Alyssa Bolio has accused her brother, Jordan Thompson, and his girlfriend, Carmela Tercerelli, of wrongfully selling her belongings. Jordan and Carmela claim Alyssa gave them permission to remove her property. Now, you have no right to go into somebody else's bag. If they gave you instructions and you accepted those instructions, please sell my computer for me, which is what you just said. Isn't that what she just said? It is what she just said. Yeah. Yeah. sell my computer for me, and you decided not to sell it, but just to give it to somebody else in the family who could better benefit from it, you gotta pay for the computer. Period. She owed me money. Period. I have the evidence. Just a second. Okay. Just a second. <laughs> That's a different story. Camilla, let me tell you something, sir. You look like a very nice guy. You look like a very nice guy. Uh, I would unload her as fast as I could. Oh. I'm just telling you. Wow. I'm just telling you, because first she says, I gave it away. Let's understand what she says. First she said, I gave it away. Then she said, she told me to sell it, right? Yes. Then she said, I gave it to somebody who I thought could use it better than she was using it. Now, I'm going to ask you, Kevin, to go get the two pieces of paper that she wants me to review well, that one. she owed her money, and then I'm going to go back and explain to your lovely Camilla, listen to me, sir. I'm listening. Who I would think twice about. Well, I don't see anything about a computer here. I see that you wanted them to sell your TV, yes. jacket, and all of this is so that you can get them out of jail. Yes. <laughs> oh. oh. I didn't see anything about the computer. I see the TV, I see a jacket. Here, it's right here. Just a second. It's not in the ones you gave me, but I'm glad you gave that to me because I have some indication that she did, in fact, ask you to start selling stuff because this is the same person yes. that you went to the cities with. Yes, and... Uh, yes, when you forgot where you were and woke up in a hospital. Yes. <laughs> Okay, found someone who wants that digital graphic computer. So can you put it in the living room or by my door? So you were gonna sell your digital computer. Yes. Was it his computer? It was, but he had given it to me. So you wanted to sell it? Yes. And you say, I'm not giving it to you until you pay me what you owe me for childcare because you felt as if she should pay you more money because you watched the children longer than a week. And there's a couple other reasons. And, what other, other and a pair of shoes. Be... I don't care anything about that. You have a bill for the computer? Yes, I do. I'd like to see it. No, I don't like this because the date was changed. The date the order was placed it was to April 18th, 2022. So this is not a legitimate, it may be a legitimate price, but it says order placed on April 18th, 2022. You want to take a look at that? Because that's phony. Somebody that changed that. that. No, somebody changed it. Okay. Do you understand? Yes. When did you get it? I got it in April. I don't believe this. Take a look. When did he go to jail? The 25th of, of April. What? Of April. And you left on vacation for, with him when? A week before Easter, so uh, I'm not really sure. 
A week before Easter, Sarah. Mm -hmm. What's the date? The week before Easter, the previous Sunday would be the 10th, April 10th. April 10th. And you were away for a week? Yes. And then you don't remember where you were? No, that was the second week. That's that was the second week? Yes. I was in Colorado for the full week, and I came back the day before Easter, and then um, I left on Easter Day, and then and, I... And when did you get this computer? <laughs> you see, that's what I'm asking you. When did you, could you possibly have gotten this computer if the bill... This is dated the 18th, which... Of I, April. Which I believe they said was the day she came back. When could you have possibly gotten it from him? I ordered it for him, I paid for it, and then he gave it to me. Listen, I suggest you both get your acts together. You get nothing from your brother. Just consider yourself very, very lucky that he, that he took care of you and that he let you come into his house. I would suggest you not do it again, and maybe she'll get smart. She has three children. She'd like to raise them together. She should get a job. Find a way of making a living. Figure it out. Because you made three children, they have a right to a certain amount of stability. And they I, all are stable. That's not stability. That is Get stability. it to you. Oh, well, th th sometimes you can't get through to people. They're that kind of thick. And that's why we are where we are in this country. Do you understand? Yes, Think sir. twice. I know you tried to be a good brother. Yep. Think twice about doing it again. By the way, does your mother work? Yes. And it mentioned something about a father. What kind of work did your father do? I don't really remember. He was a logger. Both your parents work. Yep. Good. Evidently, it didn't rub off. Thank you very much. Your case is dismissed, as is your counterclaim. This court is adjourned. I'm okay with it. She was a friend, and I love her children. And really, it wasn't about her. It was about those kids. You won't talk to me because of her. You need your job. You need to... Change. Change. Something needs to change with her. I don't really care. Hopefully she does figure it out. The kids deserve it. He deserves it. He's a good brother. You know, that case takes me back to my family court days. Mm -hmm. And I only have one observation other than the fact that I'm what should be society's frustration with this, which is once you have children, you have the responsibility. Your sole responsibility is to make sure that your children are taken care of. You have to say, listen, my social life takes a backseat. Everything else takes a backseat. But I have three little kids, and they are my priority, so I have to do whatever I can to put my life in order. And she clearly has her priorities all messed up. I agree. I think I, I can understand and empathize with those women who are parents who can't provide a stable environment for their children and temporarily leave them with a mother, a father, a, a family member, while they can provide for a stable environment, go get a job, go try and find constant housing. But it blows my mind. I can't empathize with leaving your children with family to take care of and then not doing anything to put yourself in a position a better, to care for them. In a better place. Yeah. You're right. I don't have to worry. Hello, xin chào mọi người quay lại channel của mình. Hôm nay mình sẽ cho mọi người đó là gấp một chiếc hộp có đấy một uh, chiếc chuông màu đỏ nhá. Thì gấp được nó chiếc hộp hôm nay chiếc sử dụng uh, chiếc hộp màu đỏ thì mình tô màu đỏ thì cái chuông màu đỏ thì mình sẽ dùng màu đỏ. Còn về phần dụng cụ thì mình có một chiếc thước, một hồ, chiếc kéo và một chiếc bút nhá. Để làm nó thì giờ mình thêm vào làm này. Để cái này là chín cm. Cho dùng thuốc kệ nó này
제가 좀 속게요. 때문에 보네. 뭐 열다섯 개 때문에 아니요. 사중 석개 나오네. làm cá dư phần dư của nó đi này. dùng hồ cốt nó này. sẽ làm gặp nó vàng. cái này mình là tám mươi năm cm nhé mở ra này, thôi kể nó này, mở ra gặp tiếp này vào. tiêu này chỗ này nó dùng thuốc kề nó xong cái phần dung nó đi gặp tiêu này vào chuông dùng màu đỏ nhé để mình làm chuông hơn nó Xong cái phần dư của nó đi này Chụp 
Okay, mình không biết trong Cảm ơn các bạn đã Như vậy mình hoàn thành xong chương trình đùa, chương đùa rồi rồi Các bạn thấy hay cho một like, một share, một ký kênh nhé Hẹn gặp lại các bạn chương trình lần sau Xin chào và hẹn gặp lại